Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Checkered Flag E Streaming. We are here tonight for the Lucas Oils Australian Stock Car Championships. Yes, it is the weekend, Warriors. It must be Saturday night, and it is indeed. I am as a Mr. Carl Wilkinson with the uh, bringing the commentary here tonight for a slightly earlier start time after iRacing shenanigans have uh, have played with the timing system, unfortunately. So we apologise for that little uh, little boo boo. Um, but joining me up here in the booth tonight, I have on cameras and also helping me out with talking is Mr. Mark Johansson. Mark, how are you going, mate? Yeah, good, Carl. Uh, I just uh, saying I should um, unmute myself so uh, so the so the viewers can hear me. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we've had a little bit of a hiccup with uh, with iRacing, racing, uh, same as Thursday night. Um, some uh, some glitches with uh, their updates, and um, they have changed the time on us. You've got to love it. You've got to love it indeed. Otherwise, we would be crying right now. Um, so that's going to shake things up here for Pocono just a tiny bit. It's not going to be too much of a difference, um, but it just makes it. We get into qualifying a little bit quicker here tonight. I've got Ruben Feltz on screen at the moment, uh, going around to start his qualifying lap in the SRM machine. Sports Home Over Break Mechanical uh, flying around this very, very large triangle. Of course, we are at Pocono, the tricky triangle. A uh, place two and a half miles long, um, and it's going to be a tricky one for the drivers tonight. It's a track that can really catch people out. Yeah, definitely can. Sorry, Carl. I'm just uh, just trying to bring up a uh, <laughs> a um, a um, picture that's uh, has decided not to uh, jump up for me. Uh, so just bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. While Mark goes and gets his Russian hammer uh, to fix all of those problems, we'll keep our eyes on qualifying at the moment. And Ruben Phelps pops his car up into you. I'm waiting for it to up there, up onto pole at the moment. And that will be good news for him tonight uh, because uh, his championship challenger is not here tonight in Toby Stent. So this could be an opportunity to close the gap up front for the 06 Flying Kiwi of Ruben Phelps. Looking through the rest of the field. Matty Ray's popped it up onto P2 at the moment. That's good news for SRM. JCW on the third row. Brenton Henderson on the fourth. With Jane there, Curtis, Mark Smith, Jai Schultz, Maxi Marshall, Norman Clark and Derek Jacobs rounding out our top ten at this very moment. Uh, looking at the championship-wise, uh, it is Toby Stent in the lead. 89 points at head of Ruben Phelps. Matty Ray sits down in third position, 126 off the lead with Stevie Dub in 463 down and Daniel Hedishide in the fifth, 183 off the lead. Uh, just quickly while we are working, uh, just looking at the temperature and the track conditions out there tonight. Relatively windy out there, 19 kilometers per hour and 12 miles per hour southwesterly direction. That could cause a little bit of wobble in the entry and exit of a couple of those corners. Temperature-wise, we're looking at 23 degrees air cells, air temperature 73 Fahrenheit, of course, and 29 degrees Celsius on the track, 85 degrees in Fahrenheit with 1% humidity. Uh, slightly cooler track is going to be a welcome thing here at Pocono. This place is really punishing on the, the front tyres because of its, uh, well, its unique layout. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely going to be a tricky track tonight. I went around and did a few uh, hot laps myself earlier, um, and it's uh, going to be some fun. Um, as you can see, the racing phase come up there, 160 laps and uh, 643 ki kilometres or 400 miles. Uh, four tyre sets available, and the fuel range is going to be between 37 and 41 laps tonight, Carl. But uh, four sets of tyres, they may have to look at double sitting a set of tyres to get through this race. Um, the right front tonight is going to wear the hardest. Um, I did uh, like 50 laps um, and the right front was absolutely shagged. Yeah, it can be very, very painful out there. 
um, and it, it can really, really affect those tiles. And of course, with a limited set of four sets for the race, you get set your start on, and then three extra sets to change through. That can definitely change things up. So it's a foggy Pocono. We will start with running through the track order here tonight. And taking pole position is Ruben Phelps for SRM. He's got Jai Schultz starting next to him on the outside row. Row number two sees Joshua Carroll Walden next to Mark Smith. Mark to update. Sorry, uh, I didn't want to didn't want to rotate through for me. <laughs> um, give it a poke. The hamster is obviously a bit tired, a bit hungover tonight. It's Gary Wellman and Maddie Ray making up row number three. Row number four sees Daniel Hedershaw next to Norman Clark. It's Brenton Henderson with Jamie Ann Curvis on the fifth row. Ryan Jones makes it on row number six with Maxi Marshall on his outside. Stevie Dub and Brad Fenley. Make up row number seven tonight with row eight being filled by Tristan Koch and Adam Ariel. Christopher Tomlin will be on row number nine. And then we have a few cars that didn't qualify. Andrew Dyson, Derek Jacobs, Kai Turner and Brett Campbell. Uh, filled with 21 cars here tonight. Uh, should be some good racing. And uh, it's going to be a thing of just keeping the car in contention. Keeping up the speed and keeping yourselves up with the rest of the front runners. Uh, of course, a bit of drafting is, is sort of used here on the straights but when you're going through those corners uh, it can just unsettle the car a little bit and use up a little bit more tire so we'll see how they run it out tonight mark it's going to be a tricky race for everybody yeah small numbers though uh in the field tonight so we should see uh, a lot of green flag uh racing um unless as i said you know um turn one can, can you can lose the, the rear end Turn two, I found if, if you're carrying too much speed into turn two, you may find the outside wall. And turn three, same thing. If you, uh, you've you got two two things there that may happen. If you're carrying too much speed, you'll lose the rear end or you'll find yourself into the outside wall coming down the main straight. Very much so. So they're all starting to file out onto this track. One thing about uh, Pocono, of course, it is a very, very wide track indeed. Uh, it's a track where you can get away with what, six, seven wide at some stages. It is a interesting track for that sort of thing because it's so very wide, but it does narrow up on the start finish straight with the concrete walls fencing you in very quickly. So an accident there can cause a big one. So hopefully we will get away with that and not see too many incidents. Uh, that's going to be the hope for tonight. Some good racing, but not too many incidents here at Long Pond, Pennsylvania for the Outlaw Images 400 at Pocono. Yeah, again, we, we may have missed some guys uh, through starting this race through to the uh, the uh, little bit, bit of a mix-up with the... Uh, with the uh, iRacing uh, server changing things on us and we found that on Thursday night with the uh, NSCAR Cup 2 car we had a little bit of an issue there. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a problem with the uh, with the servers when they get updated sometimes. It just tweaks things over when you've already set them up and it can cause a few little headaches unfortunately. So we apologize to anybody that's missing that and of course if you're joining us late as well and watching on a replay because of that we apologize for that too because of course we've had to start a little bit earlier for the broadcast here tonight as they come through turn number three for the first time tonight they're about to see the green flag drop here at pocono i'm gonna shut up let's enjoy these cars roar away here for the weekend warriors. Contact up the front between Ruben Phelps and Joshua Carroll Walden. They just about make it through. JCW just, just keeps the car in the right position. Big drama on the opening lap and everybody gets through relatively unscathed. A few people dropping spots. The Coldermith and Jai Schultz, Gary Bumman, leading their way through mostly. Jai Schultz getting a huge lead because of that. Everybody checking up behind. Brian Jones flying his way through the field as well, up into P2, where he was 
course. Uh, but that was a uh, that's a big moment at the opening stage of the race. That could have been disaster for a lot of these cars. I'll just see if we can see it here. Um, we might have to watch the heart. So I think that's just no. a little bit after the incident, Mark. So I have to just go back in time as we're coming through. There we go. Into turn one. For the first time tonight, the two cars make contact on the exit. And, uh, well, let's watch the replay right now. Yeah, you see just that little bit of a slide for Phelps. Goes down into Carol Walden. Carol Walden just, just in the exit. And everybody does a great job of avoiding an accident behind as well. Everybody spreads out and just, just misses out on, uh, well, carnage here at Pocono. Uh, good, good to see Ryan Jones uh, uh, up some spots already yeah, into his uh, standing position. Carl in the second place. Absolutely, he's up nine spots already in this race. Big gainers: uh, Stevie Dub, Christopher Tomlin, and Kai Turner. All of them absolutely flying up the field in those opening stages. Uh, big losers was JCW down nine spots, Ruby Bugs down four spots um, after that little incident. Just unsettled and. Uh, well, it looked like you know, Phelps just got a little bit loose as he went through the first corner. It just made that contact, and that's one of the things we saw in the race, 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 but these things do not like to handle in the early stages of a skin. Cold tyres can catch you out, and that's what's happened again here tonight at Pocono. Yeah, it definitely has. And uh, Joy Schultz has got a great lead uh, uh, thanks to it. Um, but these guys behind him, they'll start to work together and. Uh, Close that gap, so uh, we'll have to just wait and see how how it pans out tonight. Uh, and we can see two wide down the main straight out of turn three. Uh, it's a little bit confusing tonight because there is no turn four. Yeah, that is it. As we might have got the timing that cheats up on the screen, just, uh, just glancing over. Um, but you can see already cars are flying through. Stevie Dub working his way up quite quickly, battling away back there in the background. And um, J Ryan Jones sort of the head with Gary Wellman. They're trying to close the gap to Josh Schultz at the moment. Those three cars of Jones, Wellman and Smith need to work together because because Jai Schultz has an absolute lead out there at the moment. Yeah, it's... Uh... Definitely a big lead. Oh, uh, we got a car going around, and it's Brenton Henderson bringing out the caution. A few cars caught up in that one. I can see Nag Kerbis and heavy damage for Norman Clark. Unfortunately, nowhere to go in that one as those cars have gone round, and uh, that looks like Henderson and Clark might be uh, well needing some heavy repairs there. Let's go back and see what happened here on the replay. So watching the green and white car up front, the SRM machine. Um, and get the feeling there might have been a little bit of contact from behind that brought this one out. They start see Tris uh, see Turner and JCW racing hard on the exit. JCW goes down the inside as they come across turn three. Will he try and make a move through the tunnel corner here and watching, watching, watching. Little check up there. Henderson gets into the back of, I think, now Kerbis. Uh, sorry, of uh, Christopher Tomlin, I think. That caused a check up. Slowed him down there. JCW going for the move. And then in turn three, just clips the back of the 81. And, well, Norman Clark, nowhere to go in that one. This is exactly what Jai Schultz did not want to see after getting that nice big lead at the start of this race. No, definitely not. A um, uh, little bit, a uh, little bit of a, uh, a misfortune there, and uh, yeah, it's uh, going to see Brenton in pit lane with uh, some heavy damage, but uh, it doesn't look too bad at the moment sitting there. It's going to be a bit of a repair bill on that car. Pit lane is getting active, though. We've got cars coming in. Jai Schultz, Gary Bond, and Steve Dub uh, all sticking it out with Christopher Tomlin and Kai Turner. The only five cars to stay out on track. The rest of them coming in to pit lane. Who's remember to click off the tyre button? That's going to be a crucial thing for this stop. They just want to top up on fuel. That's going to be 
all they want to do. If you do tyres right now, you could really, really hinder yourself later in the race. Looks like everybody has clicked the right buttons, though, and are pulling through with fuel only, as I think Jamie Mac Curvis is getting some repairs done. Um, so a couple of cars getting some repairs done. Uh, Dyson might be also in that camp as well. No, Dyson's um, there at the back of the, uh, the, the pack. Uh, Norman Clark, Brendan uh -huh. Henderson, and Jamie Nankerb are still in pit lane getting repairs, mate. No, Andrew Dyson missed his pit box. That's why he took longer than I expected. Because uh, I was just looking at my timings, and uh, Andrew Dyson just missed his pit box. And of course, he does it when it doesn't matter. You know, it, it, it does it at the time when it's not crucial. Um, but he uh, was in there for a lot longer than some of the other cars. But he's just getting that one fixed up. Uh, Norman Clark and Brenton Henderson both getting some heavy repairs done to those cars. Hopefully they do not lose a lap from it. Uh, but that's really, really hurt a couple of people out there tonight. Yeah, definitely, and it's only lap six of uh, of uh, 160, so it's going to definitely be a long race, and, and those guys have to make lap 80 to, to get any points. Yep, that's always a crucial thing, and, you know, tonight where it's a slightly lower field, you can find yourself getting a whole heap of points for the night. So it's it's a crucial thing to get a good result here tonight. It's going to be a pivotal thing for these drivers. And, uh, well, this is shaking things up a little bit. We've got two SRM cars coming in pit lane. The Sim Racing Madness cars with mobile brake and mechanical on the front coming in just for a quick top-up, I think. They're just going to get an extra little splash of fuel into the tank just to get themselves an extra lap or two in the run here. So they can go a little bit longer in this stint. They'll be starting right from the back of the pack, though. Um, so this could be a this could be a genius strategy call, or it could not help you too much. We'll find out later in this race. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely uh, be a, a, an interesting one to keep an eye on. Um, but they'll catch back up to the the rear of the field. Uh, Jamie Nan Kerbis has got his damage repaired and back out, and unfortunately Norman Clark. He's still sitting in pit lane. Yeah, heavy repair bill for himself. Brenton Henderson just getting the car back out on track, but that thing is not straight at all. Lots and lots of damage to the 81, unfortunately. Brenton Henderson um, tends to be unlucky uh, with his positioning. He's, he's often the car that, that's in the worst spot at the worst time when an incident comes out, which is a shame for the driver of the 81. Um, but he's got it back out there at least and trying to return it to the field. Norman Clark as well, getting it back out on track too. So we've got all our cars remaining as we're coming through the corner now to get ready for the restart. Pace car lights are out in turn three we go. Still throws me out only three corners on an oval. Just does not feel <laughs> right. As the pace car pulls in, it's going to be Jai Schultz coming into the restart zone. When does he drop the loud pedal? Right at the end, gets a nice start there for Jai Schultz. He's very low, very early, just so he's out of the draft of everybody else, so people can't tuck in behind the rear spoiler there and get a big draft run down to the first corner. It's one of the, uh, the things of Pocono with the restart zone being so close to the uh, pit lane entry. There's a long run down draft. Gary Wellman up there in second at the moment. Drivers could well be in contention for tonight. Christopher Tolman up there as well, up into P3 after Stevie Dub just didn't pull away with the speed he needed there. He's battling with Kai Turner at the moment. Remember, these top five cars have not come in the game, so they got a little bit less kill on but uh, Sooner. So the race continues here, lap 9 of 160, 151 to go here for the Outlaw Images 400 at Pocono. It's definitely uh, going to be a long race. Uh, uh, again, we, we see these guys now just slowly starting to spread out a little bit. Um, but it's definitely uh, 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 that from 
from fifth back it's going to be a, a lot of pack racing from Kai Turner sorry from six Ryan Jones uh, unfortunately Ryan's dropped back a, a few spots there Carl um, but I have no doubt he'll uh, stick in there and uh, definitely be there with the chance at the end just up the front, Joy Schultz is starting to get a little bit racy here as he has got Gary Wellman all over his tail. Christopher Toblin keeping it back there as well. Keeping him honest, he's keeping up with this front three. You can see they've pulled out a little bit of a gap as well as Stevie Dub and Kai Turner fighting it out with each other as they come down the straight. Uh, but Gary Wellman's definitely looking at trying to, to get himself up there and see what he can do in this fight for a win here for the Weekend Warriors. Yeah, definitely. We haven't seen uh, Gary w run with the uh, Warriors a lot. He's uh, m mainly been concentrating on the um, Australasian and Super e Supercar E-Series. Um, and he's been having some good wins over there and, s and some really good results. Yeah, he's been having some very good results as he makes a move down turn three. Tries to get in the inside of Jai Schultz and Jai's taking that nice sweeping way through the turn that's going to give him a better exit. Gary's going to rely on the draft behind, try and pull himself up there a little bit further back. You can see Joshua Carabaldon and Ryan Jones fighting it out with Mark Smith on the tail. So plenty of action here uh, in the race. And, uh, some people wanted to move their way up the field in at the early stages of this run. Yeah, Mark Smith's uh, been able to get past Ryan, so um, a nice little move there. And uh, I, I know there's uh, no love lost between those two. Uh, they, they like to race hard and, and they will rub each other if, if it calls for it. Christopher Tomlin up the front has got a massive run coming out of the tunnel bend. He just absolutely launched the car through there. Almost got past Jai and Gary Wellman there. Real big run for the 2 one two as ooh, just has a little bit of a blink. Uh, but uh, just shows just getting that car in the right place at the right time on this track can really pay off with some epic runs. Yeah, definitely. I'm just looking in the background there. Uh, we might jump back uh, to Ruben Phelps and uh, Matty Ray uh, trying to get Brenda Henderson into that toe of those two cars with that heavy, heavy still very he um, heavy damage on the front there, as you can see. So, uh, Brendan's going to... Brendan's going to... If want to jump up to P2, just quick, Mark, because those two were absolutely side by side for that whole lap. But... Uh, I agree with Branson Henderson needs to get right on the tail of those two cars because the damage is going to be slowing him down. Right now, though, we see Gary Wellman getting a run up on the inside of Jai Schultz. Can Jai keep that car centred again? Close on the exit, but keep it side by side. Could not fit a cigarette paper between those two cars. Great racing from Jai and Gary Wellman there. Real close stuff here at Pocono. Again, getting close into turn one they come. And look at Tomlin, he's sitting there trying to pounce as well as Wellman takes the lead. Yeah, Wellman's just been out of position, that car, in the right spot. He had the uh, inside line coming into the turn, so he's uh, been able to stick it down and make, make that move. It's crucial to get those lines absolutely pinpoint accurate on a track like Pocono. You can gain a huge amount of time especially through that last corner, the tunnel corner, turn number two. If you can get the car hooked up on the low line there, you can launch yourself out of that corner and then it's a nice long straight where you get a huge run on the cars in front of you. Right now, Kai Turner's all over the back of Tomlin as well. We have got a four-way battle for the top four positions in this race. They're looking racy up the front. Stevie Dub just keeping on the tail at the moment. And all five of these cars, the ones that stayed out, have pulled a fairly decent gap out in front of themselves. They're, they're pulling away from the rest of the pack uh, just by a little bit of a margin. So this could be useful in the long term if they can keep up their speed. And the other good thing too, Carl, is that we've got three three different makes in the top four. We've got uh, the Mustang, two, two Camrys, and then Kyle Turner in the uh, in the uh, in the Chev, and he's been able to get past uh, Tomlin for third place. So the three makes in the top three now. 
Absolutely. Nice to see other cars all up there, all the different brands battling it out here tonight. And uh, unfortunately, it's the Blue Oval that's leading. That's, that's the only problem. Yeah, definitely. I think I might have to throw some tax out on the road. <laughs> ah, don't worry, it's a Ford. It'll expire in a couple of laps. <laughs> a tick for it. <laughs> Bang. Ooh. As uh, Tomlin gets a big moment, so does Mark Smith behind as well. Uh, they both pull it up there. I the caution cor flag is out, though. Yeah, it looks like it's Mark Smith. I just haven't been able to get to him quick enough, but we'll uh, go back and see if we've got a replay. Ooh. Yeah, it looked like he had saved it. Uh, unfortunately, he'd sort of gone down onto the, the apron, and it's very bumpy down there. And the Blackers Racecraft car did not like riding those bumps. Uh, so uh, both Tomlin and Smith had a moment out of turn, out of the corner. Um, and Mark Smith was, uh, well, the unlucky one. Both of them had basically a sort of similar similar thing happen to each other. Um, they both just lost the rear coming into turn one. Oh, Back you can see there, yeah. Them. And watch this, Tomlin saves it, saves it, saves it, and then he hits the bumps. And unfortunately, when uh, when all four wheels are off the road, uh, it does not make for a good race car. Definitely not. So, have uh, will we see these front runners down pit lane uh, to take a service and some fuel? I wonder if they're going to stick it out and just see what they can do here. As... Yeah, that was a big moment for Mark Smith. All four wheels were off the tarmac. Um, and it really, really cost him. As for some reason, my RR seems stuck on slow motion. There we go, I've managed to get it back into normality. Um, so I wonder if they will come in now. It's been 15 laps. Um, so they've done about five more laps than the rest of the cars behind. <laughs> or I wonder if they're going to stick it out and see what happens. I think just having that little bit less fuel in there, just being a little bit lighter, has helped them out in the early stages of this stint. I wonder if they're going to keep to that. Joy's see in. Now. Williams is in. JCW. Uh, looks no. Like no. No. Jai Schultz threw a dummy and they followed it. So Jai Schultz sticks it out there. He took the late dummy there. So Wellman, Schultz, Turner, Tomlin all stick it out. Uh, Ryan Jones is staying out there as well. And everybody else is coming through pit lane. Yeah, I don't know if, if there's any better camera angles for that Mark Smith incident, Mark, because that was a... Uh, that car absolutely got airborne. Um... I'm just wondering if we can get a really good shot of that from getting completely off the ground. Um, see it there, the, the suspension just absolutely launches the car. Uh, and it was, was clear of the tarmac by a good, uh, good couple of inches. Not a nice feeling in that car and look really unfortunate. And it just shows what a tricky track Pocono is. You know, he'd saved it from the big crash, but unfortunately, um, just sticking it down on that infield section is not a wise decision because it gets so bumpy down there, and you can see what happens. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a, 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 a bit of a bumpy ride there uh, for him. Uh, I wonder if he's uh, if his milk's all uh, is still not shake, shaken and uh, turned to cream. That is it, and that old jig boy it didn't all go well for him. Um, unfortunately, Boss Hog caught him out of that big jump. Yeah, definitely. Um, look, Carl, I'm going to bring something up too. We we've been plugging away the uh, the, the the Golden Octopus uh, um, uh, race uh, coming up in, in the first of July, and unfortunately, Brett um, has had to postpone, uh, well, cancel that that race for the time being. Just not enough entries, uh, but we will be uh, looking at, at, at rescheduling that uh, and maybe with some different cars. So please keep keep tuned um, and, and we'll keep you up to date as more information comes to, uh, to light with that. 
Oh, absolutely. And look, if you've got a couple of dollars sitting spare and you, you sort of want to uh, put it to a worthy cause rather than keeping it for a cup of coffee in the week, maybe just head over to the Golden Octopus Foundation. Fantastic place and look, a, a, a cause that's very close to, well, unfortunately, many of our hearts where we've been affected by cancer, but it is the worst well, there's no such thing as worse cancer. It's all as bad as each other. But childhood cancer is such a uh, sad thing to have to suffer through. And it's a charity that absolutely does its best to help those children battle on and fight hard and help the families as well who are having to deal with it. A fantastic, worthy cause and one very close to Brett's heart as well as many of ours. Uh, please head on over to the Golden Octopus Foundation and... Look, if you don't have any spare coins sitting around, we all know it is very tricky at the moment. A little bit of sharing as well on social media makes the world of difference. Uh, if you can absolutely get some more eyes on the project, it all helps out. Hopefully, we will see you all for a race in the very near future for it too. So we can see Norman, Norman Clark, the lucky dog. Uh, that now leaves only uh, Brendan Henderson two laps down. Um, but he should get is should we see uh, another caution he'll uh, be able to get out and get his uh, a lap back still very damaged for the SRM car unfortunately the mobile broken mechanical crew are, uh, are doing a great job of repairing it but it took a fairly heavy whack pace car is pulling in into the restart zone we go it's Gary Wellman in the lead head of Jai Schultz he puts his foot down early doesn't catch anybody going by the looks of it and gets away nicely uh ryan jones coming in because he's got a black flag so ryan jones having to come in for a penalty so that is painful for himself i think he came in uh came in a closed pit lane and i just changed how that thing worked uh, wednesday night looks like it's caught ryan jones out tonight As we get back to the race and Christopher Tomlin and Kai Turner racing hard with each other side by side as they come through tunnel once more tonight. Everybody is still on the same tyre as they started on, so no tyre advantage for anybody out there. It's all about the fuel loads at the moment. Everybody in the top four has stayed out all race long. They've got uh, done about 18 laps, 19 laps on in this car. It's all contact between Turner and Tomlin. Turner goes around on the start, finish straight, and somehow avoids the wall. Uh, but it brings out the caution flag. That was a big scary moment there for the whole field. I am sure it's just like maybe Tomlin's just drifted up a little bit, just got a little bit wobbly. Just tagged the back of the 408 there. And Kai Turner goes around and around. Uh, that's not going to be good for his tyres. But he crucially misses the wall. And everybody else misses him. So not too much damage on that car. His race is definitely not over. Uh, but he might need to come down pit lane to slap a new set of boots on that thing after that big spin. See here from the drone cam. Just that little bit of contact and round she goes. And Kai Turner doing an excellent job of recovering that car, keeping it in at the right place at the right time. Uh, he saved that one absolutely. He's done really good there, dropped it down two gears and uh and straight back on the loud pedal. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic save. It's, um, yeah, it was a big, big moment. Um, I, I made a call out before to see if uh, anyone would want to jump up and have a chat to us, but uh, there's no one come back to me uh, as yet, Carl, uh, to, to say, yeah, they're free to have a chat under the caution. Sorry, Mark, I missed that. I was just <laughs> listening to some of the driver chatter over the radio. 
Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you've got it tonight, not me, because it, uh, uh, I'd say there'd be probably a few little heated drivers out there. No, absolutely. There was just a bit of discussion going on about the closed pit lane penalty. Um, JCW just came in on a closed pit lane, and he's just got an end of line penalty. Um, so he's it, it just the discussion from Ryan Jones being like, "Well, why did I get a stop hold penalty for that?" And another car just gets an end end of line. It's just the way it's changed recently. Uh, if you come in to the pit lane. Uh, at the beginning of the caution, you just get an end of line, it seems. But if you come in the lap after and uh, the sort of when everybody's formed up behind the pace car now, it will give you a 40 second stop hold penalty. It's a new thing that's been introduced to iRacing in the, I think, the latest update, uh, and it's caught a lot of drivers out recently. Uh, a lot of guys just in for fuel again tonight, and uh back out a few repairs yeah. going on I'd say yep yeah, they're grabbing the uh, grabbing the old hammers out and pushing the bodywork back out into its rightful place uh, Kai Turner's been through as well and got his splash of fuel so that leaves three cars out there Chris Tom and Jai Schultz and Gary Wellman uh, all who have not yet taken uh, taken fuel in this race uh, we've currently got two cars a lap down. Uh, that's going to be Ryan Jones and Brenton Henderson. Brenton Henderson is now just a single lap down, I think. So he's managed to get uh, somewhere back on this race. And could well find himself back on the lead lap if we get another caution. And the way things are going tonight, uh, Carl, we, we may well see that. Um, I'm actually a little bit surprised that uh, we've had so many cautions so early. Um, I thought, you know, uh, they may settle down. We've been such a long race, but um, it is, they are race car drivers, and uh, it's uh, got to go for it. So uh, it's still been some great racing, even though we ha have had a few stop goes. Yeah, it's been some good racing out there. Hopefully everybody's going to just take a little bit of a breath, because there's a long way to go still. We've still got 138 laps of this race to go. Um, so I think people will just uh, just take a bit of a breather and just get back to uh, uh, just sort of try and get the race started, get some momentum in there as well, and get the uh, get the rhythm going as well. And all the important thing that is forgotten about in uh, regular circumstances, but you need to get the rhythm in a race going. If you sort of keep stop starting, you tend to you tend not to be as comfortable with the car and. When you start up that stint again, the car's changed a little bit because its tyres are different, the way a car feels is different, and there's more chance of having that little spin. Whereas when you're out there for a nice long green flag period, the car just slowly changes. It slowly gets worse effectively as the tyres drop off, but that means you can sort of work it out. You feel how the car is, and you don't sort of have those little mistakes that we're seeing at the moment where, where cautions are breeding cautions. So hopefully everybody will get back into their rhythm after this restart so going to be going back to green flag racing for the outlaw images 400 here at pocono it is the lucas oils australian stock car championships of course on your saturday night here on checkered flag e streaming myself carl lucas and of course mr mark johansson up here in the booth coming through the tunnel corner now so about ooh, about a mile or so left until we get to the start finish line uh, it's a big old track, Pocono, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it's uh, two and a half mile long, and it's uh, it's a long way around here. Um, at, uh, I think it's 80 kilometres an hour. So, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a long, long way. It is. In your road car, you're sort of sitting at 120 odd kilometres per hour going, gosh, this is fast. In the race car, you're sitting there going, God, this is slow. A pace car is about to pull in once more. We're coming up to the restart zone. Into it it goes. Gary Wellman waits, he waits, he waits. He drops the loud pedal, gets away nicely and pulls away here for the green flag. It's Gary Wellman, Jai Schultz, Chris on the Stevie Dub up the front. And we are back to racing. Worked out pretty well for Stevie Dub. Um, he didn't take that first pit stop, of course. He's coming for fuel this time around, but he's managed to keep his position on the track because uh, everybody else came in with him. So he sort of found himself shuffling up the order nicely. A lot of cars uh, 
not having so much luck further down the field. Uh, but it is going to be a uh, it's now a time to start racing your way through the pack. As up front, Gary Wellman launches himself away. Max and Marshall, Kai Turner racing each other side by side. They've got Ruben Phelps just behind them at the moment. Kai Turner is charging his way back up towards the front after that little moment on the start finish straight uh, that keeps himself in the race crucially. No major damage between himself and Christopher Tomlin. That's crucial for this race. And he is going to be racing his way to want to get back up to the front of the pack. Car that was caught out with all of this was Ryan Jones. He lost a lap. So he will be sorely hoping for a, uh, a caution in the near future just so he can get that lucky dog taken care of, get himself back on the lead lap and start racing once again um, before everybody else starts uh, starts putting themselves into positions where they could take that spot away from him. So racing hard at the moment on board with Kai Turner. See them really closing up. There's Jamie Nankurs down on the inside there. Brett Campbell on the high side in the golden octopus car. Having a good run at the moment up in P6. He's up 15 positions. Yeah, it's just uh, listening to, the, to, to Kyle drive that. Um, there's two ways guys can get around this track. Um, some will be changing down gear um, in the one and two. Um, and then back up in the fifth down the back straight in that short straight at uh, Buck Pond. Uh, but then then uh, some will just do uh, what, what Kai's doing and he's just backing right off the go pedal and let the car roll through the turn. Yeah, using some of that rolling resistance just to slow the car down and that that's a good way to just keep some speed in there as well and uh, you know it, it's also a little bit more fuel efficient as well so it can be a good way of just getting that little bit of fuel saving going if you can keep it up in the higher gears and not rev the heck out of the engine it can help use a little bit less fuel and in a race like this that could be crucial if we get those big long green run periods and a few extra litres of fuel up your sleeve could really give you a good opportunity as this race runs on yeah definitely just staying on board with uh with on, on on um, Kai Turner because he is the man that's uh, really on the charge. He, he come from uh, way down in the field on that restart and he's now up in the seventh spot. Yeah, I think he's got the old bit between his teeth right now. Um, that's big move just behind. I was just watching uh, Maxi Marshall. I think he just got bogged down a little bit, had a bit of a moment coming over turn two and everybody doing a good job of avoiding that one but lots of cars just darting in opposite position opposite directions of each other um plenty of action going on at the moment though through this lower field of the pack they are racing very hard at the moment everybody is really really keeping each other on edge yeah definitely i'm just wondering uh probably won't see, won't see ruben and the other srm boys uh make a real hard move until um, real late in the race, uh, probably after lap 100, we'll, that last 60 laps, we'll see Ruben and uh, really start to press, press, press home because um, uh, he, he, he can make up some decent points here tonight um, on on his championship rival Toby Stent. That's not not here. And we just saw uh, Brett Campbell just having a little bit of a moment. He ducked it down a little bit low through the tunnel corner. Just got a little bit loose on the exit, but kept the car in the right direction. Uh, but it lost him a handful of positions there. And you can see right now, uh, he's still suffering a little bit from that speed being taken off the car. Because they're three wide down at the start, finished straight. Got Mark Smith on the inside, Maxi Marshall in the middle, Brett Campbell on the high side. Very close to each other. Brett had to take a little bit of avoiding action and he's gone high in turn one. Just keeps the car in action. Mark Smith had to lift off there as well. Good racing between these guys. Yeah, definitely some good uh, close thought of all racing. And and that's what you expect here at Pocono. Uh, the, the, the track's not highly banked, so uh, as you were saying before, Carl, that's a track where you really need to keep momentum out. Yeah, it's really crucial to keep the momentum in these cars because, uh, you know, even though you've got 
700 odd horsepower at your beck and call. If you lose a little bit of momentum going through these corners, it really costs you in top speed, and that can be a painful thing. So we're just the back up front here with uh with Gary Wellman. He's got just over uh just over a half a second um between himself and Stevie Stevie Williams. Uh Joy Schultz uh, still in that, that third position and uh going well within that Toyota. Uh Christopher Tomlin um, in a fourth. And Kai Turner, what a drive through the field car up in the fifth position now yeah he's absolutely going for it at the moment he is not worrying about fuel saving at all he is going full on attack through these corners he's actually just having a little bit of a listen to daniel hedershaw and he's just backing up a little bit as he's going in the corners he's just dropping the clutch in and letting the car roll into the corners and then flicking it back into fourth and then letting the clutch out midway through the corners to get that car rotated He's saving fuel in this early stage. He knows there's a long way to go. So he's doing a little bit of fuel saving here to try and get him itself a little bit further in this stint. Watch there, drops it down into fourth, gets the car turned in, puts the power back on once the car is in the position he wants it to be in, put back down on the floor. That's keeping him with pace in the car as well. So he's doing it just to save as much fuel as possible, but also to keep himself in some good pace in the number 035 Atari. Meanwhile, up at the front, Wellman and Stevie Dub are getting a little bit closer, uh, but the green cars are keeping the front row uh, at the moment, and Josh Schultz is sitting there going, yeah, I wouldn't mind that back at some stage. I'm gonna see what I can do here. He's just waiting and waiting to pounce the steering up. Goes for a run down the inside through the corner of turn two. Makes a run there. And they both get a little bit locked into not the right positions. And this has given Jai Schultz the opportunity to get a huge run. He was biding his time there and he took his advantage right when he needed to. The 27 getting his way past two cars in the same corner there and he is going to work his way back up to the lead right here as they go three wide down the start finish straight as they battle away and watch Christopher Tomlin as well now he's thinking well you guys battle away I'll see what I can do Jai Schultz just puts his foot on the brake a little bit there to get a better turn in decides not to go for it now he's going to try and get a better exit out of this section now and try and get the run through turn two brilliant fighting up at the front of the field Definitely some hard charging and then, uh, some some real hard racing. Um, uh, I, I guess it's Joy's. Uh, I think I can't remember where Joy is in the championship. But I think he's in the top five or six. So he'll be looking to press some, uh, get some points back too on that on that championship lead. Currently sitting in seventh, just behind Brad Fenley at the moment. So. Uh, he is really hoping to close the gap a little bit. Uh, Stevie Dubson's in fourth position. Uh, so he's the highest running car at the moment in the championship position. So Stevie Dubson's going to want to really, really get some good results over the other cars tonight. Oh, as Brett Campbell is pulling it into pit lane because he's had a big moment coming through turn two. He made a move down the inside of the 515. It just put him offline as Brad Fenley was on the inside and he has gone flying up into the wall and uh, unfortunately the Golden Optimus car has had to come in for some major repairs. Uh, might be a bit further on in the lap here. So something happened to Adam Ariel I think in front of him and just meant a little bit of avoiding action for the Golden Octopus car. And you see here, he just goes down the inside. He's got Brad Fenley on the inside, and he just, I reckon he just got the call that it wasn't clear. He stayed up in that high line, and the marbles took effect, and all of a sudden, he whacked it right up into the wall. 
heavy damage there for him, unfortunately. But up the front, we've still got some fighting going on. Uh, as now, Kai Turner has got himself right up into this group. They are fighting hard for, well, the lead of the race. All five of these guys have been up the front all race long as well. Kai Turner, Chris Tomlin, Stevie Dove, Jai Schultz and Gary Wellman. They are back to fighting hard once more tonight. Lap 35 here at Pocono. Yeah, they definitely are. Definitely don't want to give anyone, a, well, they're giving each other racing room, but but only just uh, enough to uh, to uh, let them buy, um, which is good uh, if we see 160 laps of this. Yeah, they're going to be tired after 100 and, uh, 124 laps of this. They will be absolutely knackered, but uh, we would love to see this racing continue for the next 124 laps because they are really going for it. Stevie Dove, he got shuffled from, well, the lead down into fourth position. Meanwhile, the move for the lead is going on between Wellman and Schultz as Joe gets a really good exit out the corner. He's able to take a slightly lower line and really, really keep the car in control down there he once again does it through turn number three gets up in front of wellman and gets back into the lead of this race crucially get himself another lap led yeah, definitely uh he'll be looking uh for for some extra bonus points uh um he's already got the the, the one for uh the lap led um he'd probably be looking for the most laps led or also bonus point yeah, and tonight could be a real golden opportunity to get that extra bonus point as well. Um, you no, know, he's got some good pace around here. He started up on the front row. He started up in second in this race. So he's definitely got the speed. Just needs to just keep that speed up through the whole race. And he's doing a good job at the moment. 36 laps into this stint. But they're going to have to come in for fuel very, very soon as well. Um, these guys have not made their pit stops yet. So they'll be looking at coming into for fuel in the next probably about the next five to we had a few cautions so five to ten laps so we'll see how long they can stretch it out but i expect they'll be coming down pit lane uh, around about lap 30 about 45 i reckon yeah it's it's definitely be around that between lap 40 and and 45 uh, I can't see him getting much more out of that, but in saying that too, Carl, we have seen in the past those DPR cars really get some uh, good mileage out of it, um, and we don't know what uh, what type of uh, fuel saving Jai's been doing as we no, jump Stevie on board Dub, with him. Both Stevie Dove and Kai Turner have got some more fuel on board. Uh, Kai Turner stopped about 17 laps ago, uh, Stevie Dove 22 laps ago, so... Uh, they are going to be able to go a lot longer here at the front, but the uh, the three in the lead at the moment, Jai Schultz, Gary Wellman and Christopher Tomlin will all have to come in for fuel in the near future. They have not been going easy. They have really, really been pushing hard in this race, and that's why they've, they've been right up here at the front all race long. So not too much fuel saving going on between these cars. No, definitely not. And we can see here Jai's uh, using fourth in the fifth and then back down but he, he's not really lifting at all he, he's still got that that get, get loud pedal uh depressed but just easing off a little bit stevie dub making a move i'm uh, sorry Cartona making a move on stevie dub now and working his way up through the field as well the 408 has got some really good pace tonight um we have seen that he's already made up well, 16 positions, but he started from the back as well. So he's had to really work hard getting up into this position a few times tonight. Uh, but once again, he's back up fighting with the leaders. Gary really hasn't let Joy get away from him. Um, um, maybe he's just saving, saving that little bit of fuel and maybe hoping to get an extra lap out of that tank. Uh, because the top three have done 40 laps on this stint, so they are uh, definitely be looking at, at, at pitting in the next five laps, I would say. Yeah, Gary Wellman is not easing up at all on the pace, and neither is Christopher Tomlin, actually. All three of these guys are really, really going hard. They're some of the fastest cars on track at the moment. Uh, last time around, well, see, but this time around, last time it was Gary Wellman, this time across the line. 
Um, wait for that to update itself. But Christopher Tomlin is setting the blue pace at the moment on my timing screen and is the fastest lap, fastest car on track at this stage by a good couple of tenths of a second. They are really, really going full throttle up the front. There is no saving, no lifting. They are just going as fast as a race car possibly can do. Um, so they are really, really pushing it right now. It's not going to be long until they come down to pit lane for their first service tonight. But what this does do is we get a nice green race here, Mark, is it's really going to shake things up for the these cars just in uh, strategy-wise because there's going to be a lot of different strategies on the run here tonight. People are going to be running very, very different runs. And, uh, well, it could be a huge advantage for these guys coming in when they do uh, if it goes green because they're probably going to swap on those new tyres. They're going to have fresh boots over the rest of the field they're going to have a huge pace advantage so they could find themselves in a really good spot here um trying to split the race into sort of three tire stints and then just with a quick splash and dash at the end i'm just doing some arithmetic -y stuff um i've just had to take my toes off um my shoes off <laughs> <laughs> so if they split this uh in if they if they run this in, uh, as a as a tyre race, um, they can split it into to, uh, um, 40 lap stints, but I uh, don't think they'll do, do that, they'll probably try for a, for a three stop um, uh, three stop race, and that's 53 laps, which doesn't give them enough uh, in, in the tank to do. Now, as I said, they're definitely going to need to make a splash and dash. Um, to get this one working and I think they're going to want to use those tyres to do that if we run green that's going to be a crucial thing we see Christopher Tomlin making his way up there as well in the inside lane productions car he's flying out there in a 2-1-2 tonight a really strong performance from Christopher Tomlin great to see as he flies his way up there into second 15 places gained in this race but he's been up the front since that first portion um, just staying out slightly different fuel strategy it is really paid off for him and he's got the speed in the car tonight for sure oh, oh big wreck in the background be green because there's a huge wreck in the background mark smith caught in that one and i think andrew dyson as well may have done mark smith and oh daniel hedershide big big impact Jamie and Curvis got caught in that one as well. As Andrew Dyson just uh, sneaks his way through without any impact at all, as is the Dyson way. Um, Jamie and Curvis got a heavy, heavy whack in that one as well. Um, so Mark Smith, Jamie and Curvis, and Daniel Hedershide, all of those cars, really heavy impact. Um, unfortunately, it looks like uh, my marker has uh, decided to uh, play up, and it's not not going back, it's going back almost a full lap, so unfortunately uh, we'll have to watch this. And, uh, it's, uh, oh, fast forward a little bit, Mark. Let me see how... Oh. <laughs> so, this is going to be it coming onto the front straight here. Side by side between Smith and Hedershide. They make contact a couple of times there. And it was door rubbing gone a bit too haywire there. They went a bit too heavy. And that sent both of those cars into a big, big accident. Jamie Nan Curvis, uh, wrong place at the wrong time for himself in the uh, number eight. So this is exactly what those leaders would have wanted to see, actually. Um, caution coming out now, because this just plays in perfectly for their fuel strategy. Because they were going to need to come down pit lane in the near future anyway. So they're going to kind of get in and make their pit stop now. I wonder who's going to stick it out, because there are a few cars that don't really need to come down pit lane at the moment. Um, but they're going to be off strategy on tyres if they don't. I imagine the leaders are going to swap their tyres. So 
this could really, really change a lot of people's races. I think Ryan Jones may find himself with the lucky dog position. So that's some good news for Ryan Jones tonight. Let's see who decides to risk it and stay out. I think everybody is coming in pit lane, though. I don't think anybody is going to try for a uh, try for a different strategy call as everybody is in pit lane by the lucky dog Ryan Jones. And this time round, we see cars going up on the jacks, uh, so everyone I'd say will be changing those tyres. I imagine they're getting towards the end of their life range. Um, I wonder if anybody's going to try for a, a bit of a longer stint on them, but doesn't look like it. Uh, everybody swapping the tyres and getting the fuel done. Actually, Norman Clark might be the... Uh... Norman Clark might be trying something different here tonight. Uh, he's just changed right side only, so he's just changed... The rights only. So he's the only car out there that's trying something different at the moment. Everybody else changing all four sets of tyres. Uh, Norman Clark just going for the right side only. And we see Ryan Jones into the pit lane in the background there. So he's uh, got back on the lead lap and he's uh, going to be able to get in, get service done and uh, get out and ha have, a, have a racy race car. Yeah, he's going to get back into this race now, and this could be this could be very useful for Ryan Jones. Jamie Nacker is getting a lot of repairs done. Uh, he's back out on track now. As they are all going to be well. It's effectively reset the race back to lap one now, as they're all on all but Norman Clark on the same tyres and same fuel. So let's see how this one unfolds. 114 laps remaining here tonight for the Outlaw Images 400 here at Pocono. And of course, brought to you on the Checkered Flag e streaming. So that leaves us with uh, only two cars a lap down. Carl, uh, Brendan Henderson and uh, Brett Campbell. Yeah, Brendan Henderson, uh, but the team have done a good job of slapping plenty of 100 mile per hour tape on that car. Um, and a few extra panels as well. I'm pretty sure if, if you check it off the race, a couple of them have been spray painted from, the, uh, from other team cars as well. Uh, but it's starting to get somewhat straighter. Uh, Still not looking great out there, though, I must say, unfortunately, for Brenton Henderson. But at least he's back just a lap down, so he has got a chance of making it in this race still. Um, Mark Smith popping in pit lane again. Uh, I think he's just coming in for a quick top up uh, as they are coming round now. Uh, for the uh, restart in about two hours time once I get to the start finish line it's always the thing that throws me out of Pocono is I'll, I usually sort of chat away and sort of glance and I'm like yep okay they're at this certain stage of the track it won't be long until we go back to green flag racing and it always catches me out here and I always have an extra extra about 20 seconds of just mumbling to go on with Pace car is about to pull in, and it's going to be Jai Schultz leading away on the inside. Christopher Tomlin on the high side into the restart zone. They go, put their foot down again. Remember, all these cars are on cold tyres now, so it'll take a little bit of time to, to fully warm up. So watch out for the first couple of corners where cars could just get a little bit wobbly. Down towards turn one, we come again. Kyle Turner trying to get himself up there quickly. Manny Ray up in P4 at the moment. Gary Wellman and Stevie Dub just dropping down a little bit. They've got all oh, a little bit of contact on the back of Gary Wellman from uh, Joshua Carroll Walden there. Gary Wellman holds the car, gets it back on track, does not catch one of those jumps like Mark Smith did, but that's lost him a whole heap of positions. So making it 
through for this first lap after the pace car and a couple of little moments through the field but everybody looking to be pointing in the right direction at the moment Matter of oh Christ, where do I look? <laughs> <laughs> right, lots and lots of action now. I think Gary Wellman he just got caught out with those cold tyres. Back end of the car stepped out, and that just made it so. Um, so Joshua Carroll Walden had nowhere to go. I think he actually pulled it up in time. He didn't make contact with the back of the Simboy entry, uh, but it was very close in Dave Christopher Tomlin now up in the lead of the race. He's managed to get himself ahead of Joy Schultz and get himself across the line to get that magic lap leg point as well. Tomlin is on fire tonight. Got some really good pace in that inside lane productions car. Yeah, definitely. Those both those Toyotas are, are really on fire tonight. Um, so you may see uh, see one of these boys uh, for a for a race win tonight. A little bit of bump drafting down the front straight there. Just help themselves a lot, working well with each other between Josh Schultz and Tomlin. They've got Kai Turner right behind them. We know how hard Kai's been pushing the car tonight. He's got some fresh boots as... Oh, a little bit of a moment as well over the tunnel curve. And somebody, they've just got a little bit loose, I think. It was JCW, the back end of his car, stepped out. Managed to save it in the nick of time, but he lost a couple of positions because of that fallen in behind Andrew Dyson who's worked his way up to the front of the field for the first time tonight to see Dyson moving his way up and uh, would not be surprised to see that car up the front of the field at some stage tonight yeah definitely uh, the last couple of laps JCW has been having an issue here uh, through turn one um, we might just stick with this at the moment and just see if he uh, has the same issue but we're three wide now down the front straight between Dyson, JCW and Gary Wellman if they tend to pull themselves back in. No, the car's behaved itself, so maybe uh, with those little bit of uh, drifting, uh, he's been able to get some heat into that tire, those three tyres, and uh, they decided to uh, stick this time around. Yeah, it definitely does not look like a comfortable car on the first lap or two on cold tyres. The back end is just stepping out for a fair few drivers, and we saw that in the earlier stages of this race. A few people being caught out by that. JCW having a couple of moments. Gary Wellman as well, of course. We saw him dropping back a few positions. He's managed to work his way back up through the pack now as well. Uh, but these cars are definitely a little bit... Uh, a little bit temperamental on those first couple of laps on fresh boots, so something to keep an eye out for the rest of the race. Fastest lap of the race just been set by Manny Ray, uh, up in P4 at the moment. The SRM mobile brake and mechanical car working his way up towards the front of the field and is currently the fastest car out there with a 53 6. It's good to see uh, Matty Ray up there. We don't normally see him this high up until the last quarter of the race but um, he, he's, he's trying something different this, this, these last few races uh, and trying to get up there and, and, and battle with these leaders and put himself in a, a, a really good position yeah this could be a good run for him tonight and championship wise as well this could be a very nice run indeed he's sitting third in the championship at the moment so a victory tonight could be a fantastic chance for him as we've got Kai Turner making a move on Jai Schultz right now through turn number one. Gets a nice turn in on the entry of the corner. Who can get the power down the best on the exit? Looks like Jai Schultz, that higher line is paying off again for him. He gets a really good run through the top of the corner, but now turns two. This is going to be crucial for Turner. If he can keep it to the low line, get that car through the corner nicely. He should get a good run on the exit. The low line seems to be running off better tonight through turn two. Turner doesn't quite get the exit he needs. Jai's just got himself in front, drops himself down. Now he's got the room and secures P2 once again. Again, we just seen the background there. Carl JCW get really loose. I think he just rubbed the fence out of that turn three. Go back and have a look at that one. Um, as 
he made it through without touching the fence but again it's just been that car is not looking settled is it it's just just having a few moments they're getting very close to that fence same could be said for William Phelps as well he really got onto the closest part of that fence you want to go uh, that concrete is very very unforgiving a couple of safer barriers around here right on the mid part of the corner but the rest of it is that unforgiving concrete as Jai Schultz and Kai Turner are once again battling away swapping positions through the lap and Jai has managed to get himself back up there for the time being Kai's getting a good run off the corner can't quite make it work as Jai just let the car walk up the corner just to keep that car behind him really good racing at the moment and as this battle is happening behind him Chris is on the sitting there going, yeah, fight away, boys. I'm happy for this. This is helping me out as I can just keep my line where I want it to be and not have to worry about trying to defend. So just looking at some times as well, and uh, it's just interesting to see... Um, sort of lap times they're sort of hovering about the 54 second mark now so the tires are starting to wear down um not really with the speed as a little bit of the mid corner there for the 27 of josh schultz 408 of car turner gets a good run off the corner drag race down the start finish straight uh but uh, jai's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of draft to help him along here he's going to take the high side through one and one now and looks like uh has managed to get that position he slides up in front and managed to get back up into p2 once again this bike is uh every time i look it's a different car in second place yeah it's uh lap for lap at the moment um and we see now kai uh having a run at christopher tomlin yeah he was, he was sort of having a bit of a run because he was defending uh, from from the car behind as well and that gave him a run and it gives him a great run into this corner Jai Schultz just has to get on the brake pedal there Kai Turner just absolutely feathering the throttle through turn number three that was excellent driving Christopher Tomlin saw that one coming just just gave the room so there wasn't an almighty bang between the cars Kai Turner takes the lead for the race from Christopher Tomlin that was a big big move yeah, definitely, and uh, we see there uh, Christopher Tomlin went to go around him, and, and Jai ju uh, Kai just moved the car, um, and th that's fine so long as you just move it once. Um, once you start waving uh, uh, across the track, that's where you'll come under um, a scrutiny from uh, a post-race uh, look, and they both almost touched the wall there. Tomlin caught the wall for sure that was a heavy whack to the 212 hopefully no major damage uh, it was pretty square on with the wall so i reckon it was just the back end that, that caught the brunt of that but you could, ooh, just watching tomlin right now mark he's just struggling to get through the corner there back end is not behaving how he wants it to do i wonder if he's just damaged the rear suspension a little bit because that car did not look settled and we just see here uh stevie dub uh, making a move under Matty Ray for our uh, fourth position. Yeah, Stevie Dub back up there again, the veteran of the Oval Racing in Australia. Uh, watch Christopher Tomlin, Mark, because that car is not looking good. Uh, he's just giving it a little wiggle here and there, and I think maybe there's just a bit of damage on that rear suspension that he's just having and to work out. He catches the wall once again. That car is not handling how he needs it to. He might be lucky there with that secondary hit on the wall, and it might have just knocked. Oh, it and again! Position, but he catches the wall once again, as Mark just said. Like it's it's not handling how it was before. I think that 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 uh, real hard knock a couple of laps ago has, has really done some damage to that that right rear suspension. Because yeah, he's, def a... he's definitely slowed, Carl. You know? well, he's de definitely slowed, and, and Williams now is going to get the pass done underneath him. Yeah, 
Tomlin's been struggling with that rear. He, he was really loose on the exit of the corner a couple of times as well. I've been watching him get that car moving and it just keeps getting loose. And every time it's not going where he wants it to go. And it's been a real struggle and he's just plummeting. Uh, well, he's hemorrhaging time at the moment. He's dropped a fair amount of time from the leaders who are back to battling now. Kai Turner and Jai Schultz fighting it out for the lead. Jai making a big move down the inside of the 27. Getting a run down the inside of the 408. And makes his pass to try and get the lead. Turner gets a little bit tight in the mid corner. But keeps that car in the right spot. Drag racing down towards turn number two. Now over the tunnel we're about to go. Jai's on the nice bit of concrete there. Oh, sorry, nice bit of asphalt there. He's going to be able to take a nice line through that corner and get himself into the lead once more. A little bit further back, Steve Dub making his way up into P3. Now, Maddie Ray making his move on Chris and Tomlin as well, who is just struggling at the moment with that bit of right rear damage. And again, he gets very close to the wall. I don't make contact that time, but the car is not turning how he wants it to. That thing has just become real tight after he caught that smack on the wall. You know this as well as me, Mark, but you know, when, when you when you sort of give a car a whack on the wall, it doesn't always cause cause damage that actually affects the driving, but sometimes it affects you mentally and you go, is there damage? Have I got damage? And you start to question it and that can cause you to drop time as well. Yeah, definitely. Especially if it's a, a hard knock like uh, like what he had. Um, because that, that one that, that really upset him was a, a reasonably hard hit into the wall. So, yeah, you definitely start to second guess uh, not only y y the car, but yourself. Yeah, and you do not want the rears getting knocked out of alignment. It can really, really hurt the car. I had an experience on Wednesday night where I got a heavy impact. We're in the same position, this is a car going across the track. We're going to see a caution flag flying on the start. Finish straight. It's Maxi Marshall and Brad Fenley making contact with each other. And heavy damage for both those cars. The Aussie Beer Motorsport car getting a huge smack in to the wall. And just looks like Brad's just, just been wandering up the track a little bit. Just had that tiny bit of contact. And then the net codes kicked in and bang into the wall they go. I think that's going to be an accident that Brad's going to look back at and go, oh, what was I thinking there? As it was one of those moments where he just thought he was keeping it in a straight line and it just caught the side of Maxi Marshall. Um, really unfortunate racing accident there between the 59 and the 08. But it looks like Fenway's going to have to pull that in, get it towed, because there is a lot of damage to that car. Yeah, a lot of damage across the front. Um, so, not not a good good night for Brad. And then there is also a little bit of a secondary accident. Norman Clark, unfortunately, he's had a bit of a moment when they were all slowing down for that incident. Norman Clark's gone to slow down, and maybe just a little bit of that damage before the brakes lock up, and. There is a big secondary accident. You see him going past Adam Ariel there. Does not slow down in time. And secondary wreck happening. Yeah, unfortunate for both Norman and Adam there. I think what it was, just looking at that, looks like Adam Ariel started to slow down. Norman started to slow down. Seeing he's not going to slow down in time. Jump to the left, thinking, that's all right, I'll be able to slow down and just let him pass again. And then all of a sudden, there's no Stakar in the middle of the road jammed on the brakes and well big big accident but this should see brenda henderson back onto the lead lap carl so it's uh it's going to be uh, uh good for him as jai schultz does the dummy again he's been throwing some good dummies tonight um but everybody else looks like they're going to be coming in to pit lane to top up their tanks with fuel they've got about 18 laps so tires not going to be changed at this stage i reckon 
but fuel is going to be a big one. Oh, so, Dyson has missed his box again. Why can't he do this when he's leading? When, when it's <laughs> crucial green flag stop, you know? He's, he's very... He's very good at making mistakes when it doesn't matter, Dyson. Um, but no, it's uncharacteristic for him to make those mistakes. He's obviously he's obviously struggling a little bit. It's one of the tricky things as well, of course. The pit box is here. Um, you do the initial braking, and it's a long chug down pit road onto that concrete as well. The car does not stop quickly, and you've really got to be cautious on the brakes. It's so easy to overshoot your box. There's also that big bump as well. And I reckon that might be what's catching Dyson out a little bit. There's there's a, nasty, there's a couple of nasty big bumps on the pit lane here. And it can quite easily just stop the brakes from working how you expect them to. I might, um, might see if we can get a word, quick word in with, with um, Adam Ariel. Uh, uh, copy, copy Adam. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, mate. Uh, uh, a bit of an unfortunate one there for you uh, coming across the start-finish line. Yeah, look, that happens, mate. The car was parked there and uh, Normie had nowhere to go. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, much damage? Do you get much damage out of it, mate? Or uh, oh, yeah. I felt like it, I felt like I had damage, but uh, it actually didn't repair anything. So we'll wait and see. Okay. Well, the car looks fairly straight. Uh, we've got you on screen at the moment in, in the the whitey's pies uh, entry, the 55. Well, that's good. I'd hate to scratch up the whitey's pies. <laughs> I, I can give you some good news, Adam. Um, you barely got any damage on the car. You had a very, very light touch on them, but they got nothing that's going to cause damage. Maybe tiniest, tiniest scratch on the front paintwork. Well, I think I need to buy a lotto ticket because that was a fairly hard shunt, so I've done well. <laughs> well, mate, uh, plans for the rest of the, uh, the, 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 the race? Just... Uh, Keep circulating, and uh, or, or we we going to see you uh, really have a a, a a push towards the end. Uh, yeah. Look, I'll just circulate at the moment. I don't really feel I've got the speed to match these guys tonight, but I'll see where I end up. All right, mate. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, we'll we'll let you get back to it. Uh, because we we'll go get back green racing very shortly. And and thanks for having a chat. Thank you, guys. Well, there you go. One lucky driver, Carl, uh, not to get too much out of that last uh, incident. Yeah, he had he had Norman all like sort of across the front of his car sideways for a fair bit of that run, but uh, luckily Norman hit the wall harder than he hit the car. So uh, some some lucky moments there for Adam Ariel. That's some good news, some commiserations there for the car running down in 13th position. Uh, unlucky for some, but not for himself tonight. Yeah, definitely. And with 95 laps left, uh, uh, so we still got at least uh, another two or three uh, pit stops to come. Well, it's going to be two stops. Well, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be two, at least two stops for the rest of the field. Jai Schultz and Kai Turner um, will we'll be able to make it two stops. The rest of the field will have to make it three, I think, from my quick maths. So this could work out well for Turner and Schultz here by sticking it out. So it's going to be interesting to see how this race unfolds from here. Back into the restart zone and Kai takes off. I think we're going to see a few drivers trying a big fuel save here because if they can save enough fuel, those ones that have come down pit lane, um, they could possibly make it into a two-stop race, whereas everybody else will be just on the bubble for a three-stopper. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a short splash and dash for most of the field. Kai Turner and Jai Schultz will have one pit stop, so they're going to sort of keep it on a sort of got an idea of what they want to do here. So let's see how that one unfolds as we go back to green flag racing up the front. The battle is back on between. Turner and Schultz, these two have been fighting all the way long. And they're straight back to it. The inside lane productions car on the inside of the monster car really fighting hard at the moment. Ooh. 
Yeah, these guys definitely aren't giving a, a, a lot of room. They definitely want to uh, have, a, have a battle right throughout, right around the, the, the track. And I guess, Carl, it's one place that you can can do that because, uh, oh, we see uh, Tomlin in the background uh, get a little bit loose there. Um, I was just saying that this is one place where the track is between 60 foot and 100 foot wide in some spots. Yeah, it is. It's a nice wide track where you can really race with each other. Christopher Tomlin, uh, the back end, stepped out on that car a little bit. It's nice to get it back into uh, the right direction. And but that pit stop was probably useful for Tomlin because he could just come into pit lane, just get a little bit of repairs done and just make sure the car is uh, somewhat pointing in the right direction. And that could just make him feel a bit more confident. Although it never drives the same, it might just give him the opportunity to get a somewhat decent finish in this race. Uh, but we've got plenty of action on a track as uh, a little bit further back the battle starting to heat up between Jones and Dyson. And you can see Gary Wellman in the mix as well there. So these three experienced runners on the oval circuits are really racing hard at the moment. Down in 7th, 8th and ninth. They're behind Manny Ray, Joshua Carroll and Stevie Dub. Ruben Phelps working his way up towards the front of the field as well. He's up in P3 at the moment. So he's moved his way up to the front of this pack and he's going to see what he can do now. We know that car is quick. He had pole position, of course, uh, but we've not seen him up at the front for a long time. No, definitely. Um, and it's getting to that point where, where Ruben would want to be starting to uh, get up the front. So he's done well to get back up into, into P3. Yeah, not, not even at uh, half race distance at the moment. We're on lap 69 of 160. Uh, 91 laps remaining, so uh, still a fairly long race to go here tonight for the Outlaw Images 400 here at Pocono. It is the Lucas Oils Australia Stock Car Championship, of course, the Weekend Warriors on checkered flag, e Streamer. So the rest of the field uh, seems to have settled down just that fraction. And the action is still uh, still definitely up the front. Uh, as we check out, they are uh, Adam Ariel and, and Christopher Tomlin. Adam's uh, doing what he said he was going to do, just rotate. Uh, Norman Clark and Derek Jacobs, we haven't spoken much about them. Derek is, Derek is the only American driver in the field tonight. He's currently sitting a lap down. Um, just keeping the car in the right position. He's not racing too hard. He's just keeping the car up in the running at the moment and just keep himself out of trouble he's just fighting with Norman Clark and this is a crucial battle between these two cars because it's for the lucky dog position uh, Norman Clark is driving a bit of a battered dog at the moment that car is taking a fair few whacks uh, still got some good pace in it but it has taken a fair few licks so uh, it's going to be a struggle to keep that one up to pace but he could get it back on the lead lap as up the front We've got Turner making a move on Jai Schultz once again down the inside through turns uh, for turn number three. They go. Uh, sorry, turn. Yeah, you're um, right. Turn yeah, three. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, the Jai's going right back on the attack, but crucially, the cars behind have kept themselves nice and close this time around. Ruben Phelps is right within striking distance. So Stevie Dub, Joshua Carroll Walden, Matty Ray, and Andrew Dyson. Uh, they're pulling a little bit of a gap over Gary Wellman and Ryan Jones. It seems like that low line and that mid line has really started to come in, Carl. Um, we, we don't see many people around um, around against the fence here because it's just not, not the done, thi done thing. Uh, but you, you, I know the move can be done around the outside, especially through here, through turn three. I think there's a lot of debris being rolled up onto that high line at the moment. It's making it pretty treacherous. Uh, every time I've seen a car go up there, they've ended up in the wall. So it's really become like a two-line race. That mid to low line is, is the crucial one to stick on. If you go up a little bit too high, all of a sudden you find yourself getting up into the concrete and having a bad night as Stevie Dub almost showed us there. He just managed to hold on to the car in the nick of top time but he was getting very close to that wall. So 
mean, it, we could just have two cars this race. If we just had Kai Turner and Jai Schultz, they'd be giving us some great entertainment. These two have been fighting lap after lap after lap after lap and constantly swapping positions. Every time I look up the front, it's a different car leading. Uh, but it's always between those two. They've been doing a really good job of fighting tonight. Uh, unfortunately, Christopher Tom has dropped off a little bit. He had some good early lead run pace, but that whack against the wall on the rear has dropped him off the pace a little bit. He's fighting out with Adam Ariel, trying to catch up to Tristan Koch. Um, but the, uh, the leaders have really been putting on a great show tonight here at Pocono. Yeah, definitely. I've just brought up the uh, top three information. Uh, we, at, so far, we've had five cautions for 15 laps, um, and we've had 13 lead changes, Carl. I think last year's race, we only had nine lead changes. Yeah, there's been some fantastic action up to the front, which is well, what we love to see. Um, we had six separate leaders last time out with nine lead changes, and what we've had, uh, had at least four or five lead different drive cars up here for the leader of this race as well tonight so there's been a lot of action here um but great to see these cars really fighting it out trying to keep themselves in the front of the queue nobody's settling and going yeah i'll just sit setting second and just push you along try and gap the field a little bit i want to be leading this race and both jai schultz and kai turner have been absolutely on that, that mindset all race long yeah definitely and, and Look, there's no, there's no real slouches. Ruben Phelps there in third place. He can definitely get in, in into the, into this battle. But I, I think it's going to be a little bit later in the race. Uh, as I said, I, I don't think you're going to see him really start to push home until probably what, one, uh, one thirty plus. Uh, Stevie Williams is also uh, a, a race winner this year and and definitely can battle. JCW, he he's missed a few races this year with his uh. Uh, world travels and so he'll definitely be looking for a, uh, a, a a race win and Andrew Dyson well you can never never count out a, a race win for him in, in any any uh, race he's in and Matty Ray uh, will also be looking for a, well he, he should get a good result but I uh, don't believe he's had a race win yet this year um, he, he was the champion in the trucks earlier in the year for us so um, he's been thereabouts uh, almost there for a race win yeah and uh, the car sitting behind him Gary Wellman um, what a fantastic season it's been for the sim boy uh, he has really been flying in the V8 as well as the, the Thunder car as well taking his first Ansgar Thunder victory a couple of weeks back but he has really oh, been sorry. pushing hard we've got Ruben making a move for second sorry Carl We've just seen that in the top camera view and he's uh actually been able to get past joy and take second as he gets a bit loose on the exit of the court for tunnel and this is giving stevie dub the opportunity to get a run as they were almost free wide for a moment there but stevie dub now making the run on phelps he made the move for second but it cost him uh, as he's lost uh, third and now dropped back into fourth position um and could even lose another position because look at how close jcw is and dyson is now starting to make some moves up the field as well yeah just start uh, going back to gary is, uh, gary's had a, a couple of good results too in uh the answer cup hasn't he and car cup hasn't he uh not in the cup no. well, he's had some some decent results but no wins next to his name um, but he's had some really good runs recently in the trucks and the Xfinity cars. Uh, so he's definitely one to watch out for. And, uh, well, he proved the other night in the Australasian Supercar E-Series where he started four laps down and still took the victory. Uh, he can absolutely come from nowhere for the win. So he's going to be hoping he can get that one done tonight. He's battling with Ryan Jones at the moment. We know Ryan Jones would sorely love to get a victory next to his name in the near future. After a plethora of P2s this season, a victory would be the sweetest thing for the number 11. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, definitely, definitely would like to uh, get a get a race win. And oh, oh we've got a car wrecking. Who is that? Tristan. Who's gone down. It's Tristan Koch, heavy into the wall across the start, finish straight back 
and stepped out on the exit of turn number three for him. Uh, and luckily nobody was on the inside, but Tristan Koch getting caught out there in the 550. That is a huge amount of damage on that car. He's going to have to need to come down pit lane for sure to get some repairs done. That thing will not be turning correctly for a few laps, but the caution flag does not fly. Oh, Tristan, don't oh, go down there. Watch going on that part, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> it gets very bumpy down there. He's, he's doing the right thing, just keep it out of everybody's way, but uh, yeah, you've just got to avoid that bit of the track for sure, as Mark Smith will tell you. We're just seeing here with Tristan. He's battling with Gary Wellman uh, in this fight, and he's just gone, taking a slightly sh narrower entry into turn four. He's kept it tight, kept it tight, and then on the exit, he doesn't catch the wall, but the back end just steps out on him a little bit. Just doesn't get that catch done in time, and into the wall he goes. And, well, into the wars he goes as well. Big shame for Tristan Koch. He was having a good run oh. up there. Up the front, Kai Turner's just collected the wall as well. Not too big of a hit there, but it was enough to make Jai Schultz panic and think maybe there was something happening. I think Jai also just got very close to catching that wall as well. Um, yeah, Jai caught the wall as well, actually. So both Turner and Schultz both catching the wall there across the tunnel bend really treacherous part of the track if you get it wrong by a couple of millimeters you're going to find the wall on the exit both those cars did that hopefully uh it's not a, an omen of things to come we saw how much it affected christopher tomlin in this race will we see the same for turner and schultz uh both of those cars took a slightly less heavy hit though so they should be okay but that's not what you want to do Of course, the tyres are starting to get to that stage where they're, they're complaining a little bit more. There's a lot of green flag running this stint, more than we had last time round. Uh, remember, there was a long, there was a, quite a few cautions in the last stage of the race, and this time out, it's been a lot more green flag running, and that makes the tyres uh, just wear down a little bit more, and it can really catch you out if you're not paying attention. So we'll keep our eyes on the leaders here at the moment as, uh, as uh, Tristan Koch just exiting pit lane there. Uh, just letting the lead pack go through. Um, but this is that crucial part of the race. We're almost at half race distance. Uh, just a lap more to go until we hit that magic number. And we will be racing to the chequered flag uh, in this race. Kai Turner and Joy Schultz really find it hard. Kai Turner gets a little bit loose on the exit there across the tunnel once more. Just has to lift off the gas. And this is giving Joy Schultz the opportunity to get up into the lead of the race. They're battling once more here. Really close to each other. Rubbing each other's bumpers on the exit of turn number three. Oh, sorry, turn number three there. Really fighting it out with each other as they come across the line. And we are just over that halfway distance now. And into the final stages of the race, we will be going. As we see, Joe Schultz just settling himself into the lead, but these, the, the little tiny bump with the barriers for these two. Just given the rest of the field a chance to catch up as Andrew Dyson is the next to pay a visit to the wall over the tunnel bend. Takes a big smack into the wall, heavier than uh, both Schultz and Turner's venture up there. Uh, but keeps the car in the right direction. Turner trying to make a move on Jai Schultz once again. Jai drops down to the low line, tries to break the draft, tries to break the toe behind him. Turner still pushing along. He's got Stevie Dub for company now right behind him with Ruben Phelps. Uh, the two-horse race has just turned into a six-horse race. Stevie Dub really getting close to the back of Kai Turner and now Ruben Phelps as well. He's getting his car right back up there once more 
and the action is starting to heat up for this next stage of the Lucas Oils Australian Stock Car Championship. It is, of course, round number 16 of the season here for the Outlaw Images 400 at Pocono. Ruben Phelps making a move on Stevie Dub now. As he goes down the inside, the flying Kiwi is making a big run down the inside in turn number one. They go side by side. Stevie Dub's going to get a better exit here. And he does indeed as Ruben Phelps gets loose on the exit. Sorry, get yeah, gets loose on the exit. The back end steps out on him. He just manages to save the car, but that cost him a huge amount of positions. Uh, similar to what we saw earlier in the race for Ruben. The back end just stepping out on him. This time, though, he did not have a big moment, but it's cost him a fair few positions as he's dropped down right to the side of Ryan Jones up the front there. The leader battle is going on once again. Turner and Schultz back at it, keeping us entertained for this race. Yeah, definitely uh, an uh, edge of the seat uh, racing uh, for anyone that's tuned in. Um, Joy has really, really uh, taken his driving to the next level tonight because uh, He's just really driving with his head, not not over driving the car, uh, just being nice and patient, and um, yeah, it, it, it's really showing what he can actually do. Yeah, he's been absolutely coming along nicely in these races, and we've seen Joe. He, he, he tends to like favour slightly different strategies, and he's doing that again tonight. Um, of course, he didn't come into pit lane at that last caution. So he's now getting to the stage where he's going to have to think about pit lane in the short, in the few laps time. Uh, so he's getting to that stage where pit road will be calling for a fresh set of tyres probably and a full tank of gas. Uh, he's probably got about another hmm, probably about four to five laps to go, I'd say. Um, but we'll see how that one unfolds. We've not seen a full green flag period here yet. We've not seen that green flag stint running yet. And green flag stops as well. And that's something else that's going to throw a spanner into the mix. Matty Ray now working his way up the front. He's just got past Andrew Dyson. And he's pushing his way up into fourth position. Battle going on there between those two cars. Quite a heavy hit for Dyson on the front of that car. But I think most of it was on the right front wheel. And I think... He sort of got away with that one relatively scot-free. The car doesn't seem to be struggling after that heavy whack into the wall over turn two. Uh, we've seen a few guys tonight hit that wall, and uh, um, all of them have been pretty lucky Schultz at the moment. Pit Jai Schultz coming into pit lane. He pulls it in and makes it across the line. A big lock-up getting into pit lane, but I think he's just made it in. Christopher Tomlin as well, joining him in pit lane. So they've decided this is their strategy. So they are going to pull it in now with 73 laps remaining. Um, so they'll be able to make it on one more stop here, I think. Um, just about. But uh, it's going to be... They're going to probably have to do a little bit of fuel saving to do it. Uh, Kai Turner is going to be hitting this lap as well, I imagine. He doesn't have too much more fuel left in the tank of the 408. So I imagine we're going to see that car flying down pit lane in the near future as he turns it in and he is indeed pitting it in this time round as he gets the car down to the pit entry on the brakes, on the brakes, not locking it up. That's crucial. He gets in there nice and smooth and gets the car towards his box for his green flag stop. And that's that Stevie Dub into the lead of the race. And now the other battle is pretty close between first and seventh position. Uh, about a second covering the top seven cars at the moment. And they are racing pretty hard. Ryan Jones has come along alive in this stint and he's pushing his way up fast. Now, one thing that's going to be useful for... Ooh, Manny Ray getting close to the wall there. Just has to take a bit of an emergency swivel down the track, but uh, keeps the car clean, as his namesake suggests. Um, one thing this is going to do, though, is Kai Turner and Joy Schultz are going to be on fresh boots now. They are going to be able to run a much quicker than the rest of the field. Um, so they are really going to be able to put some laps in here. Everybody else is going to have to stop again, of course. Um, 
it's sort of I think Schultz and, and uh, Turner will just about be able to make it to the end but they're going to have to do some fuel saving I think whereas everybody else can push hard to the end of this race um, but those fresh tyres could really be an advantage in this stage of a stint if we see this race running green for a bit of time they are going to be able to fly on those fresh tyres and build themselves a nice lead while everybody else comes down in pit lane for their set of boots. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a worth a try of the undercut here. Um, so we just have to keep an eye out and see what happens. Well, I don't think we're going to see the leaders coming in down pit lane for another hmm, 26 laps in. So another what, 15 or so laps. So they're going to be, the, you know, they're they're going to be in a position where they sort of might be able to... Hmm. I'm just going to do some maths, Mark. I can see uh, Ryan Jones now make the move up in the in the fourth place. Uh, finally getting past uh, Rumor Phelps. So another a nice move there. Um, still up the front, we've still got Stevie Dub with just uh, almost half a second gap over Matty Ray, but Matty Ray is under pressure from Andrew Dyson. Um, and we definitely don't want to see these DPR cars out in front, because once they tend to get out in front and team up, they tend to run away, run away with the race. They do indeed. So the, these guys can make it home on one more stop. I think Turner and Joe Schultz will have two more stops. So they've got to go absolutely foot to the floor and make their advantage on the tyres and actually use that speed to their advantage. Now they need to build up a gap to make this one work. And it could work, um, but they need it to run. Well, they need it to run. Well, they do they need it to run green if, if it doesn't run? Yeah, they, they sort of, if it runs green, they could find themselves in the mix at the end of the race, but it's going to be tight. I'm just looking it's, down, and they've been able to do that stop and stay on the lead lap, so that is one definitely one thing, one good thing for them. That's it. They're about they're 39 seconds off the lead now, so they need to close the gap. That's going to be the hard thing. So... It's uh, it's going to be crucial for them uh, to, to make to close this gap and see what they can do. Gary Wellman having a big moment across the turn number two. He catches the wall as well. He's the latest uh, recipient of the Pocono strike, and that's cost him a huge amount of time. He's dropped way down the field uh, as Mark Smith's about to get past him. Mark Smith's a couple of laps down, unfortunately, from that earlier incident but still out there, still lapping crucially. Uh, we still have all the cars racing at the moment on track, still sort of, still circulating. Um, Brad Fenley, 17 laps down, uh, so he's managed to get it back out there, and at least he's going to get it so he can get some points for this evening. Yes, yeah, you still see a little bit of damage there done on, on, on Fenley's car, but that's... Uh, the boys have done a, a good job in getting it reasonably straight. Plenty of VB cans used on that car to get it back into the shape it needs to be. Uh, and uh, he's got it back out on track and back in action for tonight's race. So, uh, just looking across the field at the moment, it's uh, it's now getting into that stage where uh, I think we're going to see if, if it runs green from here on out. Uh, unfortunately, Turner and Jai Schultz are sort of in an unenviable position right now. Um, they've had a fantastic race up to this point, right up the front of the field, but they're going to need a bit of a miracle to get themselves back into this race. Uh, so they're going to have to see what they can make happen throughout the course of this one. Kai Turner is catching Joy Schultz again. 
but what they need to do is when they get to get together they really need to work put their differences aside and and work together to try and catch the back of, of this uh race pack and christopher tomlin there as well he's he's racing with these two at the moment Kaito, uh sorry that wasn't christopher tomlin was it that was Derek jacobs Derek jacobs <laughs> probably team cars catches you out when you're looking at the the long distance views and when they're similar colors it's very easy to get get the wrong wrong car uh so sorry about that Derek. um Derek jacobs so he's currently the lucky dog recipient if he if we get a caution flag out though so he's in a good spot if we see a caution flag fall in the near future um so we're going to, have to see how this race unfolds meanwhile up the front it's starting to close up Steve Dub, Maddie Ray, Andrew Dyson, Ryan Jones and Ruben Phelps all fighting for the lead of this race. The five cars are really pushing hard up the front of the field here at Pocono. Yeah, definitely. They, these three have, uh, well, the top four now are starting to close up. And uh, Ryan Jones is actually closing in on the back of uh, Ruben. So it's going to be a five car battle very shortly. Um, JCW is a little bit further back. Um, so we'll uh, definitely keep an eye on this front four, uh, front four, front five, sorry. I'll get my numbers right soon. Yeah, getting numbers right is the hard part. I, I often fail at that a little bit. <laughs> Especially when time does not help things out. Medical Center. It looks like we might have Brett Campbell up there, Mark. Uh, welcome to the booth, Brett. Uh, not a night for you, the way you uh, would like to, to, uh, to run. No, mate, unfortunately, about halfway, I um, had a rather hard incident with the outside wall, and uh, yeah, it's just given me quite a few laps, and uh, yeah, so I thought I'd just limp it to the halfway and park it up. Yeah, it's unfortunate, mate. Uh, oh, as we just see Matty Ray get a little bit loose there coming out of turn turn one down the back straight, or uh, one of the straights anyway. Uh, mate, just want to touch on uh, on your race for gold. Unfortunately, you've not been able to uh, get it across the line for this uh, for the 1st of July. But uh, I know I've spoken to you briefly this afternoon. Um, and we'll definitely uh, be looking at, at trying to get it, uh, it up and running again, maybe at a later date. Yeah, mate, uh, Ju uh, July and September are obviously uh, being Children's Cancer Awareness Months, uh, July being sarcoma, which is uh, a rare form of childhood cancer, and September being the Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, we might... Uh, revisit it uh see if we can uh work out a different class of car to race mate whether it was a class of car that we were having trouble with people wanting to drive or not uh i'm not overly sure um but yeah we'll relook at it about september uh, or maybe looking at uh holding it in september in possibly a different class of car yeah definitely hope we can get it across the line as we just jump back uh kai turnham carl has got past joy schultz so um, they're definitely on the move and uh, they're trying to catch in, or they, they're definitely catching Daniel Hedershide. Yeah, they are They're trying to, but they are battling as well. These two have not given up the fight at the moment as they are pushing their way up right to the right with each other, battling away, and that's not really helping them catch the rest of the field. So I think they're in the uh, let's fight each other and see how this battle unfolds moment. And we just see there Cole actually gapping uh, Joy a little bit. So um, it's uh, definitely not helping. Um, there's quite a gap between Kai and the next car in front. Um, as we go jump back up the front, um, you see now uh, Stevie Dub uh, pull that gap out over Manny Ray uh, to half a second. Yeah, plenty of action going on the track. But uh, just back with you, Brett, as you say, hopefully we can find a, a combination of cars and track that people 
will love to jump onto because we definitely want to see that race coming in the near future. Yeah, mate. Uh, and I'd just like to thank Mark, uh, firstly, uh, for being the one that uh, stuck his hand up to, uh, to say that he'd broadcast the event for us. Uh, I mean, a thousand K road race uh, just to raise funds for um, for kids that are doing it tough, uh, fighting the battle that they should never really have to fight at all. Um, and for that matter, not not only kids but adults as well. But uh, watching kids go through a through the battle, or even being in a position where um, you've got kids, or and they're doing the fight, and you're sick, and you can't when they're doing it tough themselves, and they need your your love and and support, and not being able to go anywhere near them because uh, a lot of people don't realise that once you once you, if you're battling cancer and your temperature gets over 40 degrees, you need to get to a, get to a doctor quick smart because uh, that could very well be the start of the end for you if you're unlucky. Absolutely, it's a horrible, horrible thing to go through and it's, uh, it's all the little implications that people sort of don't really realise, unfortunately, that, that are the harder things to live with and uh, look, as I said, hopefully we can, we can find the right combination to help uh, make, a, make a bit of a, a, a event to, to get everybody's awareness risen and of course as I said earlier in the broadcast as well you know if you, if you sort of can't get involved in the race and don't have anything spare just head over to the Golden Octopus and help share it around as well help spread the word of the community because uh, it's not just uh, a couple of dollars here and there can help out a little bit of spreading of awareness is a crucial part of the whole campaign as well yeah the, that's right um, Carl uh... I, re I realise that uh, now with everything that's going on, times are, times are getting tough for a lot of people. Um, maybe that was another factor we, we had the nomination for the event just that little bit too high. I, just something that we're going to have to go back and, and look at collectively as a, as a group of us that were starting to organise it um, and see what we can come up with and... Uh, go from there i've had a little bit of feedback since uh since then and uh yeah we'll just have to wait and see no absolutely look hopefully we'll see you back out on track as well in the near future but we'll keep everybody up to speed on all that information uh brett campbell thanks for joining us up here in the booth mate as it's starting to heat up on track at the moment here at pocono no worries boys thank you so we've seen a couple of cars have some big moments up the front. We saw Stevie Dub lose the rear of that car, and then Maddie Ray had the same moment. I reckon those rears are starting to, to heat up a little bit, and the cars are getting a little bit tricky to drive up. Yeah, definitely. And look, you, the, the question I'm going to put put out, uh, with these front four guys, you know, and Maddie Ray, Andrew Dyson, Ruben Phelps, uh, Stevie Dub, uh, Ryan Jones, um, even JCW, um, you, you've got to ask the question if, if, if one of these guys blink are the, are the rest of the boys going to blink also and come well, back you're going to have home? that question answered because Dyson is coming in pit lane with Stevie Dub uh, and Ruben Phelps pulls it uh, sorry Ryan Jones pulls it in as well he had a late moment to pull it into the pit lane uh, he saw them boys coming in Jane Nan Curvis as well he's seen them coming into pit lane and has decided to pull the pin so the tyres are obviously falling off at this stage. They can't make it to the end from here, though. This is crucial. They need to make it a fair few more laps to get to the end. Um, so they, they can't make it on... Uh, on that They need to come in for a splash and dash from here. So it's going to be a crucial little part of who's been saving the fuel, who has been seeing what they can do in this stint, who has got a chance to make it a little bit longer. Can anybody push this car out to a a slightly longer stint because otherwise they're going to have to come down pit lane for a splash of fuel um so Manny Ray coming into pit lane now I think we're on board with him at the moment as he comes in to the lane and gets it slowed down and gets his marks there um and pulls it in to the lane and this is going to be a crucial stop for him JCW sticks out for another lap so he's going longer in this stint uh he's going to try and extend as far as possible uh, a little bit of pain here could be a huge gain later on in the race because less fuel you have to put in the tank, less time you spend in pit lane, less time stationary. That could gain you a fair few seconds out on track. That could be a crucial one. Uh, Adam Ariel bringing into pit lane as well. 
Uh, so Kai Turner's going to get back into the lead of the race. Kai and Jai Schultz have, uh, Kai Turner and Jai Schultz both have a fairly healthy lead now over uh, Dyson and Stevie Dub. So it's going to be an interesting strategy to the end. Um, everybody's going to have to stop at least one more time. Uh, but Jai Schultz and Kai Turner can come in and get some tyres. They'll have to do a full stop. But that could be a crucial part for them because they'll then have a really fast race car to the end. Everybody else will have to come down for a splash and dash. Uh, they could lose time in pit lane. If it runs green right now, uh, Jai Schultz and Kai Turner could be in a fantastic spot. Yeah, it definitely could be. Um, just looking at... Uh... So there's very, a, a very different... Uh, pit stop count there as you as you can see uh, on, on the vertical uh, count stopper um, there's a lot of guys on different strategies and as you said Carl if this thing goes green it's definitely going to throw up some, some big differences yeah that's it I mean nobody can make it to the end without coming into pit lane um, you know that they can do 40 42 laps on a tank of fuel and that was with a little bit of a caution flag in there as well so they were behind a pace car so 40 laps is pretty much the maximum you can do in a green flag stop jai schultz kai turner they stopped uh, about 20 laps ago well, 19 laps ago so they can go another 20 odd laps here and put themselves into a position where they can make it home um but they're going to be stationary for a lot longer. But you see, everybody this, else sorry, can Carl. just come in for fuel. Yeah, but you can see in this shot here down the main straight, there's the race leaders there. Andrew Dyson, after making that stop, is only two and a half seconds off Joy Schultz. He now has the fresh boots on, so he's able to use the fresh tyres now and absolutely chase down uh, Kai Turner and Joy Schultz. Um, so these two really need to to sort of extend the gap a little bit. And then further back there... Oh, we... Kai Turner's just clipped the wall again. Uh, just a little clip of the wall for Kai Turner, but he just makes it through. I was just going to say, Matty Ray and Ruben Phelps are uh, nose to tail. Stevie Dubs only uh, one or two car lengths back. Then Ryan Jones is only about five car length back, lengths back from the back of Stevie Williams. So if this goes to green and these guys can and hook up, they, they're definitely going to run down uh, Jai Schultz, and Kai Turner and Dyson. And we can see here Dyson just dropping back a little bit. Uh, maybe looking at, 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 at getting the, those four cars, five cars in a row. Brad Fenley just dropping, doing the right thing and dropping down a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this one unfolds, as I said. like It, it makes sense to come in for a splash and dash to the end, because um, that's going to be less time in pit lane. So if everybody else is stationary for, 10, for 15 seconds, if you're only stationary for 5 seconds, that's going to gain you 10 seconds out on track. But taking those tyres to the end, that could be a huge bonus and really give you the speed to the end of the race. Keeping a tire, set of tyres up your sleeve if there's a green white checker could give you the opportunity to win this race. So there's lots of different strategies that come, could come to play here to the end of tonight's race. There's going to be some gambles that are going to pay off and some gambles that are not going to pay off. Uh, so it, it's going to be interesting to see who makes this work at the end of this run. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be fascinated to see how this one runs out. Uh, hopefully we do not see a caution flag hopefully it's green flag racing because that's going to be the thing that makes this one exciting yeah definitely um but should should, should we get a green white f caution uh or a green white check i should say um that's definitely going to throw throw a, a big spinner in the works because it's going to be a two lap sprint um and and you've got to say on on the race pace that we've seen uh, it'll come down uh, it will be a two horse race between these two uh cars on the screen 
Right. But well, they'll probably used up all of their tyres, so the guys behind will have fresh tyres for that two lap stint at the end. Yeah. So that could be the winning factor as having a set of tyres up the sleeve if there is a green white check, it could be the crucial part of this race. Uh, because I, I'm, because both Jai Schultz and Kai Turner, they could, they they could just come in for fuel in the next stop. But I get the feeling they're going to put on their fresh tyres and run it as fast and as hard as possible on that last stint. Whereas everybody else is going to be just trying to fuel save a little bit, come in for a final stop, get fuel only, I imagine, and just come in for a splash and dash. So that could be a really crucial part. And at the moment, Daniel Hedishai is really battling hard not to go a lap down. He's really trying to keep himself on the lead lap at the moment. And that's costing Jai Schultz and Kai Turner a huge amount of time. They've lost about a second to Andrew Dyson in this last couple of moments in this last lap. Just trying to get their way past the 0 3 5. Daniels are um, decided to move out of the road um, and let Dyson through. But you, you're 100% right, Carl. Um, Majoy and, and, and Kai have been held up. Um, and people would say, why doesn't he move out of the road? Well, he's only he's on the lead lap, so he does not have to move out of the road to let those right guys go to pass. He's got every right to stay and fight to stay on that lead lap. That's it, and that's why he was battling so hard with the leader and the current P2, but once those two had got through, there was not really much point in fighting anymore, and he just eases it off a little bit for the rest of the cars in the field, and that's often what we see in oval racing. Of course, no blue flags, and uh, look, racing for that lead lap is a crucial part of stock car racing. Coming up next to uh, Tristan Koch as well, and Tristan's a fair few laps off this race, please, so... He's not going to make it too hard for the leaders to get past, I imagine. Um, but that's really closed up the front of this pack, and this could be a crucial thing. If this race goes green now to the end, um, just that little bit of extra time that the 27 and the 408 had could have been crucial. Yeah, definitely. And we uh, now see uh, the three-car pack going to turn into a five-car pack very shortly. With Ruben and uh, Matty Ray over in. Plenty of action happening here, and the fight for the lead is once again underway uh, with 47 laps remaining here tonight for the Outlaw Images 400 here at Pocono. And uh, well, the race is going to heat up once again. We've seen uh, these two cars have got slightly older tyres as well, remember, they've got tyres that have done a good uh, it's 17 laps more than the cars behind them so there is a bit of a tyre deficit going on here um, but saying that they will have plateaued a little bit too um, so it, it's a very different fight now between these cars we've got cars on fresh boots that are going to be able to drive any line they want well fresher boots I should say whereas the cars on the older tyres really have to stick to the lines that work for them Look at how much more speed Dyson has coming out of turn two there. That's those fresher tyres at work. He's just able to put his foot down, same as Ruben Phelps and Maddie Ray behind. They're able to take that tighter line. They do not have those older tyres on. And that little bit of extra grip gives them so much more speed out of the corners. And Stevie Dub is clo closing up on, on behind uh, on Maddie Ray. So it's uh, going to be an interesting one. Um, don't count out Ryan Jones though, he's still sitting back there in 7th position uh, and he will be looking at closing in, especially if these, got, these five get into a little bit of a, a, a battle but it looks like, uh, go to a blimp, uh, looks like uh, Ruben Phelps there is giving uh, Dyson a nice little tap to push him to the lead and this is going to open up the big door for both Phelps and Raymond. Raymond to get through underneath these, uh, underneath Joy and, and Kai. 
see Brian Jones and Stevie Dub right back there as well. They're keeping close to this fight, but Andrew Dyson has taken the lead of the race in the 41. Um, now what I wouldn't be surprised to see is the 27 and the 408 of Kaitana or Jai Schultz popping into pit lane in the next five to six laps. So they might duck into pit lane a little bit earlier than everybody else and try and take advantage of those fresh tyres. As I said, nobody, we don't believe anybody can make it to the end from here. They're all going to have to come in for at least one more stop, whereas everybody else can do a quick splash and dash. Uh, Jai Schultz and Kai Turner need to take pretty much a full tank of gas to get them to the end. And they're probably going to take some tyres as well to give them a really fast race car for this final part of the the race they could try and double stint those tires as well um that could be an opportunity for them there too uh, just save them a little bit of time so there's plenty of different strategies coming into play for this final stint of this race oh we just see there Joy schultz get a bit loose coming out of uh turn three and that's given maddie ray the chance to get up the inside Stevie Dub sitting back there too. He's trying to take advantage of that little moment as well. Just that loss of speed through the corner. Makes a huge difference. Maddie Ray gets a little bit taily on the exit but keeps the car pointing in the right direction. The cars are getting getting a little bit worn now. It's a long way into this race. And uh, well, the cars tend to get a little bit nervous at this stage. They don't feel as good as they did on lap one. Um, after taking a few little whacks to the wall, the tyres are getting worn. The drivers are getting fatigued as well. So there's lots of things that can go wrong at this point of a race. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what we, The race started at quarter past seven tonight. So we've been uh, racing two hours. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long race to be sitting in the cockpit. Absolutely, it's a lot of stationary time and uh, you, your arms get tired, your back gets tired, your legs get tired. Um, you've got all of that action going in. Stevie Dub collects the wall as, oh, who's that going around in the background? It might have been Ryan Jones. It was indeed Ryan Jones. And the caution flag's about to fly. Catch the uh, replay here. So what's happened here for the 11? Um, Stevie Dub had a moment in front of him. Uh, I think it was Stevie Dub. No, it was Kai Turner who had a big moment in front of him. Uh, Kai Turner had a massive snap through the middle of that corner and went up into the wall. Ryan Jones went up behind him, had to save that car. Just about did it. Uh, there'll be a little bit of damage to both of those cars. Uh, but that will really, really hurt them. Um, this is a crucial lap for a caution flag to come out, we've got to say, because there's 41 laps remaining, Mark. Yeah, just uh, having another look here. Kai's car just absolutely steps out on him. And snaps, and, and Ryan Jones had nowhere to go. But the one good thing for Ryan is he's been able to keep it off that inside wall. Yeah, and... And uh, well, the inside wall and the outside wall. I mean, if he, he was he was heading to the wall pretty quickly there, and that could have been a big big accident. Yeah, and as as your answer, yeah, uh, forty odd laps to go. It's uh, oh, who's gonna who's gonna risk they're all, it? They're all gonna have to pit. They're all gonna have to pit. So the, nobody can make it on fuel. So everybody's gonna come down pit lane. Um, it's gonna be a. Uh, interesting one to see if uh if well if josh schultz and kai turner take tires in this stop but that's going to be a crucial thing um they're all gonna have to come in for fuel so that's that's a given uh nobody nobody would stick it out because that would be insanity because you're not going to make it to the end you're gonna have to green flag stop it so they're all going to come in for fuel um we're going to see a few cars get the wave around uh, but every on the lead lap will be coming in right now, I imagine. Now, do the leaders take tyres? I very much doubt it. So they're just going to take fuel only. Well, 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 it looks Dyson. like Dyson's taking tyres. 
So Dyson has decided to two, take tyres to the end. He's taking his final set of tyres. Matty Ray, um, Ruben Phelps has not, have not taken tyres. Fuel only. Stevie Williams, fuel only. JCW, fuel only. By the look of things. I reckon Stevie Dove just changed the right sides. Um, just going back to put that one on. No, just taking fuel only. Doesn't look like the car's gone up. So Stevie Dove just took fuel only as well. Jai Schultz is still stationary in pit lane. Oh. What has happened to the 27? There's... That's a long stop for the 27. Uh, hopefully it's all okay. Uh, no, he's getting now. away now. I wonder if he needed to nip to take a quick personal break. Uh, uh, to a great Murphy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the perfect time to do it. Uh, he was stationary for 52 seconds. Um, you know, it's a, it's a mad dash to get there and back, but uh, he might have done it. And Andrew Dyson as well. Dyson is still in pit lane. And he's just leaving now as well. So I wonder if there was a quick personal break for those drivers. Because we were just talking, it's been a long race, Mark. Yeah, definitely. And unfortunately, by the looks of it, uh, Gary Wilman and Derek Jacobs has dropped out. Yeah, I think Gary Wilman pulled out of the race a little bit earlier on. Um, I saw him pull it in. And, uh, yeah, he is just <laughs> just seeing it in our notes up from Cody Jordan. Thank, thank you. Uh, Jai had to grab a Red Bull. Uh, so he was in desperate need of a quick energy drink. Uh, so he he ran in. Oh, shit. I did not mean to do that. Uh, I accidentally clicked the wave around pace car for Dyson. He's not actually... Can I send him back, Mark? Sorry, I just... He clicked on the wrong button when I was looking through the cars. Um, I don't know if you can. Uh, Where is he? Is he at the end of the line? Uh, he's at the end of the line. Uh, can, can I move it? Can I move it back? Um, sorry, uh, I was... Yeah. Luckily, Dyson was on the lead lap. Sorry, I was just clicking through, just looking at the cars, and uh, I'll give him the end of line, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go end of line. Sorry about that, folks. Um, uh, I'll just go end of line. There we go. Sorry about that, yeah. It was one of those things I was just glad to go over, just, just, just about to say that Andrew Dyson, he actually had to nip to the bathroom, uh, hence why he was in stationary for so long. Um, yes, so he's going to bring it through, just make sure. Um, as I was clicking through drivers, just looking at them, unfortunately I right-clicked and just it caught it by accident. Sorry about that, folks. One of the perils of eye racing. <laughs> okay, we'll sort that all out. Um, so, yeah, so it was Dyson needing to go to the bathroom, and it was Jai Schultz needing a Red Bull. So, uh, going to be interesting here to see uh, how Ruben and and Matty Ray and Ryan Jones handles this because they're on older tyres, same with JCW. Um, Stevie Williams, uh, but we believe he only took rights. Yeah, I don't even think Stevie W took tyres 
So it was just a, I think he was just stationed for a little bit longer, just getting some repairs done because he got a fairly heavy whack to the wall. So we are going to go back to green flag racing. So pace car is about to pull it in and it's going to be Ruben Phelps leading. So this is going to be interesting to see how those fresh tyres do to the old tyres. Remember those guys on fresh tyres, on old tyres, they've only done about 10 laps. So it's not going to be too bad at all. It's going to be a fairly, uh, it's going to be fairly negligible, but it might be enough to help them out. Pace car pulls in. And we go back to green flag racing. SRM have a lockout up the front. Joshua Carroll Walton's back up there with Ryan Jones. We go back to the green and they pull away nicely. It's Ruben Phelps in the lead with Maddie Ray just behind him. Joshua Carroll Walton in third. Ryan Jones, Stevie Dove, Jai Short, Adam Ariel, Jamie Mankers, Brenton Henderson, Christopher Tomlin, Daniel Hedescheid, and Andrew Dyson. It's all oh, JCW gets a big snap on those. Oh, through turn number two, he just keeps it in the right place, but that was a big, big moment there, and that's giving Stevie Dub the opportunity to make a run down the inside. And we see uh, Ryan Jones up in the third. So, Josh Schultz here has definitely giving uh, Stevie Dub the hurry up. And it looks like we've lost quite a turn-up. Yeah, Kai Turner has pulled the car in, unfortunately, and that's his race done after a really strong run here tonight. Uh, but his night is over as we look through the field. It's Ruben Phelps in the league. We've got a 36 lap sprint now. Everybody going to the end. Now, remember, those cars that kept the old tyres have still got to set up their sleeves. So if we get another caution uh, with in the next, well, if we get another caution soon, they can come in for those fresh tyres and have some nice fresh boots to the end. Those guys that came in for their final, final set of tyres, they are stuck with that. They can't get any more tyres to the end of the race. So that's really going to change things up too. So everyone can make it home now on fuel. It's just... Uh whether we get another caution, those guys that haven't taken tyres this time round will be sitting in the uh, prime position. Come in, throw another set of tyres on and away you go. But is there going to be that much difference with those tyres? We saw uh, we saw those cars that have done a good, well, a good what, 15, almost 18 laps more on the tyres. They weren't that much slower than the cars on the fresher rubber. Uh, so that could still be a case tonight. They didn't do too many laps. Their tyres have had time to cool down right now. This could be a chance for those guys that stayed out to really run away with this one. Uh, we're going to be interested to see how good those fresh tyres do as they get up to temperature and get up to racing speeds. Uh, see so, uh, Andrew Dyson now up in the 10th position there. Uh, so... Uh nice drive from him. Jamie Nankervis uh, up into the top 10. Adam Ariel uh, up into the top 10. Uh, we're having, having a good night after a really, really few uh, uh, mishaps through the, through the first 126 laps. Jai Schultz uh, up to 6th now uh, behind JCW. Um, keep it, we'll have to keep an eye on there because we know that's going to be a, a, a battle and a half. Um, Stephen... Well. I was going to say with Jai Schultz as well, we know he's been resupplied with Red Bulls, so he's got wings. He's going to be flying through the field. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Stevie Dub sitting there in in fourth. Uh, Ryan Jones uh, up into the top three at the moment. Uh, Ked, can this be a, a maiden race win for, for Ryan Jones? Uh, but right at the moment, uh, Matty Ray second and Ruben Phelps uh, sitting out in one and two. So... SRM uh, having a good night, um, and we still have uh, Brenda Henderson after his uh, mishap in early in the race, uh, back on the lead lap and in 12th. Yeah, Brenda Henderson's had a good recovery. Uh, he's back on the lead lap, as you said. That car is not still not looking too clean. It's had a fair few repairs done to it, but it is back up there. Daniel Hedeshide, he's back on the lead lap as well. Uh, so good news for him. He's managed to 
get right back up there. He's trying to chase down Christopher Tomlin, who's currently sitting in 10th position. Um, a good recovery for Tomlin after that big whack to the right-hand rear. Uh, he's keeping the car running, and uh, he would be pretty happy with a top 10. Uh, just a little bit further back, Jamie Nankervis has now got Dyson in his mirrors, and, well, it's a slightly relieved Andrew Dyson as well, as he's taken his quick restroom break uh, and managed to get back to the sim in time to get back to racing here tonight. Uh, Dyson just made that move on, on Jamie for our uh, seventh position. And, and Dyson's out after JCW now. Yeah, he crucially kept it on the lead lap. And uh, so, luckily, oh, no harm, no foul with, with the accidental button press. <laughs> so some good news there. Uh, but it has really shaken things up up the front. And I want to say SRM is sitting in a good position at the moment. But Andrew Dyson's just set the fastest lap of the race, 53-4. Uh, so he has got some pace in that car. Uh, he's a good couple of tenths faster than the rest of the field. So this could be interesting how this one plays out. back to just have a look at the 27 as well yeah he has taken fresh tires as well so he's the top car on fresh tires at the moment uh so he is really making them work and using that pace advantage to, well to his advantage he's a good couple of attempts faster than the leaders last time around it was a 53 6 for Jai shorts stevie dub 53 8 ryan jones 53 9 maddie ray 53 9 ruben phelps 53 8 so the fresh tyres are working at the moment. Oh, as Ruben Phelps back end just steps out a little bit again there as they go across the tunnel. And it's, it's always a nasty corner, that one, Mark, isn't it? Because it's very easy for the rear of the car to get loose. And it's cost him a fair bit of time to his teammate. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's uh, it's it's one that um, it, you you, you find, feel the front go first, then then all of a sudden the the front grips and and the back wants to step around on you. Yeah, it really throws it out of out of balance, and that's the thing in these cars is. Uh, this, sort of, this latest generation of NASCAR, they're, they're very different to the old versions. Uh, the, the rear diffuser on them, they're, they're a very different setup, and the rears tend to be a little bit harder to catch when they step out. It, it's gone a lot better since the launch of this car, but it is still easy to have that moment oh. as Ryan Jones just has it happen right there on screen. Uh, almost like he knew what we were talking about and wanted to give us an example. Yeah, definitely. And that's dropped him way down, well not way down, but he's lost uh, three spots there, back in the sixth. Um, I'm quite sure he'll uh, battle away. But uh, as we as we said, look at Joy Schultz in the 27 car for uh, inside lane productions. Uh, very quick and moving. He, he's definitely closing in on these two SRM boys. He is indeed. Those fresh tyres are really, really helping him, you've got to say. Um, fastest car on track last time round as well. So he is he's swapping fast times between himself and Andrew Dyson. And we know both of those cars are on fresh tyres. So at the moment, that fresh tyre gamble could really pay off. And if we don't see a caution, uh, they could really run away with this race. We've got 28 laps remaining here tonight for the... Outlaw Images 400 here at Pocono. Yeah, definitely. He's closed right up on the back of uh, on the back of Matty Ray. We can see here in, in this zoomed in shot how much quicker that car of Joy Schultz is. Looking at getting run down the inside, and like we saw last time round, just able to take a tighter line uh, through the corners on those fresh tyres. That little bit of extra grip means you can just run a tighter line and get better exit out the corner 
uh, because it, it's almost like a, a bit of a boost button because the rear tyres have got a little bit more grip to them. So they throw you down the straight more and that gives you much better run off the corners and lets you have a little bit more speed down them. Look at the orange car at the top of your picture as well. Dyson, he's closing right up to the back of Ryan Jones now. Uh, so that little battle is going on too. So plenty of action here uh, for the final few laps. 27 laps remaining. The 27 is on a charge as well. Giant Schultz, he is really trying to push his way up there as Dyson makes his way underneath the 11 of Ryan Jones. He's pushing his way there quickly as well. But as we said, if there's a late caution, could absolutely change the outcome of this race because uh, those, those drivers that have saved a set of tyres for the end will be in a great position. Jai making a move down the inside of the 27, looking to make a move on the 06. Ruben Phelps not looking to put up too much defence there. He knows that Jai is on fresher tyres, is able to make that run and does not uh, does not lose himself time by defending too hard. No, um, he, he, he knows Jai is on fresher tyres. Ruben and, and it, yeah. And Manny Ray just need uh, pr probably praying for a, for a caution in the next uh, five or six laps. Yeah, I think it, it definitely looks like the, the sort of the fresh tyres just take a couple of laps just to get up to to operating temperature, and then all of a sudden they come alive. And this is what's happened now. Look at how much speed they're able to get. Now, will the guys on the older tyres be able to keep up behind them, use the draft to their advantage, and just keep themselves honest uh, as they they start to plateau a little bit, as those fresh tyres start to, to lose a little bit of their advantage? Or will we see Jai Schultz break away and build himself a bit of a gap? Oh! Manny Ray having a big moment, big slide across the, across the, uh, the tunnel, and again, he keeps it pointing in the right direction, but that's put extra heat in those tyres. And that's going to hurt him for the next lap or two. You see uh, Andrew Dice closing right up on the uh, rear end of uh, Matty Ray. JCW and Ryan Jones aren't out of this race yet. Gotta say, it's all Joe Schultz has a little bit of a moment of power sliding out of turn three. Um, now they're moving their way up quickly. Uh, Matty Ray battling it out with Dyson. Dyson on the inside. Look at JCW now as well. He's getting himself up there as well. He's on a bit of a charge too. But JCW, as I said, I don't think he changed any tyres last time out. I think he just, just went with fuel only. I'm just going back to have a double check on that one. Fuel only for that car as well. So there's uh, there's so many different strategies going to going out here at the moment, and this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, but Jai Schultz at the moment he's building up that that lead. He's managed to pull out about half a second now, so he's bridging a little bit of a gap up the front. Dyson is still chasing down those rest of the cars. He's behind Stevie Dub now, so that fight is on. Plenty of action that yet to come here tonight for the Australian Stock Car Championship Sports, brought to you by Lucas Oils Australia. Uh, and uh, of course, it is the Weekend Warriors here on Checkered Flag e -Trim. We thank everybody for joining us here tonight. Uh, always a pleasure to be able to bring these races to you as Dyson makes a move on Stevie Dub, moves his way up into P3. Caution flag is out. Caution flag is out. Uh, this is exactly what some of those drivers did not want to see, what has happened in the field. Uh, I wonder if it was Maxi Marshall uh, brought that one out. Let's see what's happened here. So, uh, Maxi Marshall going across. Uh, whereabouts are we? Yep, same. Turn one just breaks loose on the rear end and uh, locks it all up and parks across the track. Done very well to reverse it off the track, but um, unfortunately the caution has come out. 
Caution was out long before then, so this is exactly what Jai Schultz and Dyson did not want to see, I think. Who has got the tyres up their sleeve? As I said, we had three sets of tyres for the night. I think uh, Jai Schultz and Andrew Dyson both used up their final set of tyres. Let's see if that maths correct, Mark. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see who has uh, actually saved a set. And um, so, you don't see... And I'll leave this moment up to you, Mark, and I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Just waiting to see if anyone pulls in the pit lane. Um, I believe Reuben and, and um, Reuben, Dyson, Williams, Jones, JCW. No, Dyson has sold the uh, sold the uh, the the. Um, big sale there and uh has stayed out uh just interesting to see who who goes up on the jacks here i say all these guys have uh, got another set of tires stevie williams up ryan jones is up phelps up jcw up so these guys look like they have saved a set of tires This is going to make it interesting with Joy Schultz and, and Dyson on the front row. Christopher Tomlin now back up in, in the mix of things. You've seen how much speed he had early in the race. So um, it'll be interesting to see what he can do on this restart. So this restart's going to throw a big spinner in the works because we've got the front three on old tyres, but then we've everyone from Reuben back uh, ha have, has taken a set of fresh rubber. So we will go back green this t as we come back across the start finish line this time round for a 20 lap dash. So 20 laps to go here tonight at Pocono. It's going to be a real shootout to the end. And, well, uh, the fresh tyres were looking good for Jai Schultz and Andrew Dyson on the last run, Mark. But, well, they've lost that advantage now to everybody else. Yeah, everyone from uh, Rubenfeld's back has taken a fresh set of tyres. So uh, it's going to have to be a great jump from uh, uh, Schultz. Well... 
watch them on this restart. They'll have a good run for the first few moments. Christopher Tomlin as well, he stayed out too by the looks of it. He's also on those those slightly worn tyres that have done what, about 20 laps at this stage. So they'll have some nice warm tyres for this first little run, but it's not going to last long, of course. No, we can still already see Ruben getting underneath that dog. Watch out for the cold tyres coming out of the corners, though. We've seen it a few times tonight. First couple of laps of perilous, uh, full of peril on these tyres. Um, rear ends just getting a bit loose, so watch for drivers just struggling a little bit with the rears. As, oh, Stevie Dub just makes it through the corner. Uh, Dyson trying to work his way up there as well. He wants to try and get a bit of a run in the beginning on those slightly warmed up tyres, try and take an advantage, but he's going to have to defend super hard. So is Josh Schultz, same as Christopher Tomlin. Their game now is just to defend from the cars behind them on those fresh boots. So if you're Ruben, you, you've got to sit in behind Dyson and try and push him. Um, I, I would say because you know, you've got two teammates in front of him. Um, but as as we say that, as I say that, Dyson's out and the great has been ripped up to get up into second place. Yeah, it took it took about four or five laps for the tyres to really switch on last time round for for those drivers that took the fresh boots. And then as soon as the tyres switched on, they were just charging their way forwards. There's all contact between Dyson and Tomlin! Tomlin just saves it from the wall, but that brings out the caution flag. So let's have a bit of a look back at that one. Looks like Dyson may have actually caught the wall there. Um, I think Tomlin might have just, just caught the back of Dyson as he was getting towards the wall, just checking up time, tiny bit so he didn't collect it. Just unsettled the back of the 41, and Chris and Tomlin really caught the bad end of that one, but luckily he avoided contact with the wall or any other cars, so no major damage to the 212, uh, but he would have lost a lot of positions from that one. Let's see what happens here. So coming through the corner, Looks like Tomlin gets a great run, but just makes contact with the rear, and both of those cars bobble away, and unfortunately Tomlin comes out the worst. Yeah, definitely uh, Jeff, definitely just a slight little touch there. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, let's hope there's no damage on the back of our, or on, on Dyson's car. Yeah, these things are quite tanky at the rear, so it looks like he got away relatively unscathed with that as the pace car is just catching it up to Jai Schultz right there. There we go. Uh, so the natural order is restored. Uh, but that's going to be... Well, this this is going to shake things up once again. Those guys on the fresher tyres are again going to have a restart under their, their belts, but they're going to have nice warm tyres this time around. The tyres have done a heat cycle, so they will be able to get up to speed a lot quicker. Uh, this is probably not what Jai Schultz and Andrew Dyson wanted to see. No, definitely not what they were, they were hoping for. They would have been hoping for the uh, the green flag uh, to the end um, to see him through to the checker. Uh, but that's our uh, motorsport. Uh, so the guys at the front now have done 24 and 22 laps on that set of tyres. Everyone else back down to ninth is on a uh, five lap run on this set of tyres. Yeah, that's going to be a big difference maker tonight. Uh, and, so, sorry, it's good to see Maxi Marshall uh, in the 08 get the lucky dog and uh, get get himself back on to uh, the lead lap. Um, uh, he'll be one lap down still. I think he was two laps down into coming uh, into yeah. this. So got himself one step closer to that lead lap at least. Yeah, we don't often see Maxi out in the, in the cup cars. He's... Uh, more of a truck man, but uh, it's good to see uh, that Hydro Link uh, hose and fittings back to uh, Mustang out there and uh, having a run around.
so this is going to be a real shootout to the end for these guys it's um it, it's been a long old race tonight um and you know we've seen a fair few incidents there's not been uh, there's not been a big big wreck that we've seen take out multiple cars there have been a couple of cars taken into sort of some fairly heavy incidents but it's been sort of one or two cars really uh but you've got to say as these restarts start, start counting down the aggression levels will go up and we might see that big nasty incident across the start finish line where it could take out multiple cars here yeah definitely and, and we're just looking there eight cautions tonight for 23 laps um and 23 lead changes tonight so yeah, plenty when, of action up the front when we go racing again we will have 15 laps uh, sprint race. It always makes you ask the question, you know, why bother about these long races? Just have a 15 lap sprint race at the end. You know? <laughs> save, save ourselves uh, 145 laps. We've seen some really good racing tonight as well. Uh, obviously, earlier on, we saw Kai Turner and Joey Schultz having some epic racing on the track, really, really dicing it out for the lead of the race. Uh, we've currently lost Brett Campbell, Gary Wellman, Derek Jacobs, Mark Smith, Kai Turner, uh, and uh, that's it for losses. Brad Fenley sits in last position in the, the VV car, uh, 17 laps off the lead, unfortunately. Uh, so he's uh, just picking up a few extra positions, though. Uh, could find himself in the top. You know, could find himself sort of in a fairly you know, fairly strong points position. He's got himself a decent top 20 position right here, so at least that one is settled. Lights are out on the pace car, and we'll be going back to green flag racing here as... Uh, well, it's going to be an absolute shoot to the finish. Um, could be a really good night for points for Ruben Phelps, Stevie Dub, or Maddie Ray tonight, as Toby Stent is away for this round. So they could find themselves getting a nice big points haul. Same for Jai Schultz as well. Uh, he could be finding himself moving up the field. Pace car pulls in to the restart zone. We go once more. The 27 leading the way for Jai Schultz. Andrew Dyson on the outside. Jai gets down on the power, gets down nicely, actually gets a piece of ahead of Andrew Dyson, moves himself up to the high line early, Ruben Phelps trying to make the run as well. Remember, those cars behind all on fresher tyres uh, by a good amount as well, by a good almost 20 laps, uh, 19 laps or so. So it's a very big tyre difference between these cars. Ruben Phelps moves his way past Andrew Dyson and up into second. Jai Schultz still in the lead. back of Jai Schultz at the moment really trying to get up there Jai just takes a little nibble out the wall uh, doesn't look like there was much impact there luckily so shouldn't cause any damage didn't lose too much momentum but that little touch was enough to give Ruben Phelps a run the 0-6 gets a huge run down the inside and tries to get back into the lead of the race goes in the middle line Dyson down the inside Dyson throws down the inside on those older tyres and tries to get that position back and this is good news for Jai Schultz up in the lead if those two battle away, this could be perfect for him. Stevie Dub now working his way up there quickly, trying to work his way up into third at the moment. We saw JCW have a little bit of a moment as well. The car got a tiny bit loose on the exit, but he managed to hold it. i tell you what, Dice has done well to get that second place back. Uh, but we've still got 14 left to go. Uh, these uh, new attire should come on in the next lap or two. Yeah, those fresh, those new attires will be up to temperature now and they will be able to be used. Uh, the drop off on the older tires will start to take effect though. So, how is this one going to go? Jai Schultz is really struggling. 
through the corner there. He had to lift off the gas because his car was running up towards the wall at a vast rate of knots. He just manages to get it back online, but that cost him a huge amount of time coming through uh, to through turn one. As, oh, who's that up in the wall? Uh, that was Jamie Ann Curvis, I think, just taking a big trip to the wall, unfortunately, through turn two, but he's managed to pull it back online. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any damage to the Black Arrow car as Jai Schultz just gets his lead back again. And now Dyson has got Ruben Phelps for company steaming up just behind him. Ryan Jones back up there as well. Uh, we saw Ryan Jones having a very near miss too. Uh, been quite a lot of cars that have had near misses out there and worked their way back up to the front tonight, Mark. Yeah, definitely, you know, Ryan Jones. Uh, Daniel had a show. Oh, Jai Schultz is back and steps out. He just saves it, but that has cost him a whole heap of speed and positions and dropped him out of a chance for this race as it currently stands. Huge moment for Jai Schultz, the back end just letting go on him uh, through turn one by the looks of it. Uh, that was a brilliant save, not to have a bigger wreck there, but that is, uh, well, you've got to say that's the end of the night for the 27 unless we see a caution come out. It just... Just stepped out on him. He's, he's done so well not to spear it up in, into uh, the, the oncoming traffic. But that's dropped him right down to the back of the field. Yeah, it's, it's dropped him right to the back of the pack, down in 12th position. As Dyson has the same thing happen, he just about saved it. Stevie Dub also, he's going to do what Mark Smith did, and that's going to bring the caution flag out. Exactly the same incident for Stevie Dub there as uh, Mark Smith at uh, the beginning of the race. Andrew Dyson, his back end stepped out on him, he just saved it in the nick of time. Stevie Dub had the same thing happen, caught the bumps on the inside of the track, and that car went flying back up onto the race surface. Luckily, it didn't run up too much higher. Um, Steve Dub doing a good job of just getting the brakes working, keeping himself on the line. Um, I, I think uh, Dyson would have been in a world of pain if, if that caution didn't come, because Ruben Feltz was about to, to be looking to make a move on him after he lost. Uh, just the back end stepped out on him. Same thing happened almost to him as Stevie Dub. Uh, the rear end steps out for Dyson. He just saves it. Ruben Feltz was going to get a run, uh, but then the caution flag flew. Yeah, we see these uh, cars really get loose. Uh, it's, uh, just check the weather conditions. So it, it hasn't really got in. Uh, probably got a little, a couple of degrees warmer, but uh, it's still, you know, you know uh, uh, those tyres just get heat in the, into them and really get loose. I think it's dropped a little bit in temperature as the cloud cover has, has come over, but it's it's just at that stage of the race. And I think uh, what we were talking about a little bit earlier, Mark, you know, just if you start running up too high in those corners with all the, uh, all, all the marbles and stuff up there, that's where it starts to get problematic. And well, Dyson, his, his back end stepped out right on the exit of the corner. Stevie Dub had it in the middle of the corner. It ran him up high. And all of a sudden, he found himself on a sea of marbles, and the car did not want to turn, and into the wall he went. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a marble. Uh, be a lot of marbles up there uh, against that wall after 100, 150 laps. Some good news for Maxi Marshall, though. Uh, it's going to put him back on to the lead lap. So after a hundred and I'd say uh, at the end of this we'll have uh, well at the moment if we go green <laughs> we'll have 12 cars on the lead lap. Uh, Stevie Williams now uh, he's a lap down but we may see him go another lap down because he's still in pit lane uh, getting repairs done on that car. 
yeah, I think heavy damage to the 98 tonight. And I think that might be his race over and done with. Norman Clark still circulating after taking a huge whack in that car a couple of times, actually. That, that thing has been in the wars tonight. Um, but Norman is uh, is the uh, the only car that's sort of the, the, the first car that's lapsed down. He's five laps down from the rest of the pack, unfortunately. Uh, but he will find himself around about P13 at the end of this race. Uh, so it's uh, it's not a not a terrible run for that car. Tristan Koch as well. He's down seven laps, but still circulating. Currently in fifteenth position. Uh, Brad Fenlay, the final car circulating down in sixteenth, some seventeen laps down, uh, but the fifty nine is back out on track. So it's getting very close to the end here. Seven laps remaining. Uh, we're going to have a seven lap race to the end mark. And well, Andrew Dyson is on some very worn tyres by now. But uh, these cautions have really helped extend the life, you've got to say. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely uh, the, the cycles that he's, he's been out to do. So the tyres will have cooled down enough now to get a good start. Well, we hope um, we've seen Dyson in the Anzac Cup, Anscar Cup races uh, are a great restarter on older tyres. Um, just got to bring that 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 car up to speed slowly. I know on some race tracks he does start in first gear and 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 very quickly pulls it in the second. Um, so just start uh, wondering what he's going to do here tonight. Whether it's going to be a a second gear start or a first gear start for him. That's it. I mean, it, it's a very, very limited thing in first gear in these cars. It's just, just getting the, um, just getting the wheel spin under control. But if, if it's just having that little bit of extra speed can be a huge, huge boom uh, when you start it in first. Uh, but you've got to flick it up to second in perfect timing. Was a little bit easier with this um, the sequential box of these cars, uh, but it's there's a lot of talent that's needed to, to make these things go fast. So we can even see Daniel Hedershaw there up in the sixth place. He uh, he's had had a hard night tonight, but he's uh, worked his way back up in the contention. So uh, really, we've got uh, twelve cars that could could win. Anyone could win this have indeed as the green flag drops again seven laps to run for this little final race to the end reuben phelps ryan jones all trying to chase down andrew dyson look at joshua carol walden he's back up there as well and they are racing hard this time around reuben phelps gets a good run off the corner as he's trying to get to the lead of the race the pack is fighting behind him but you've got to say, it's looking quite racy at the moment. We know he's got some speed in that car. It's been a long time since we've seen it at the front of the field. Uh, almost 154 laps, in fact. Uh, but he has got some speed in that car tonight. He just has to get past this orange machine of Andrew Dyson. Yeah, and Dyson will make that car 15 foot wider than it, than it normally is. Uh, remember, we're in, within that range that that uh, you can move the block, uh, so we may see him move, but Phelps has got a great run here into turn one, and he does it, he puts that 06 car out in front, but can he hold it? Dyson has a knack of getting back underneath within half a lap. Bump drafting here between the 06 and the 41, Dyson right on the tail of the flying Kiwi at the moment. And Phelps just, just keeping it in front through turn two, they come. And Dyson's going to try and use that slipstream, use that draft to try and get himself back up there. Of course, uh, you don't need to lead every lap, it's just the last lap that matters. Phelps will have a little bit more tyre life, he's going to have a little bit more grip through the corners. He can take advantage of that. 
Dyson knows that. He is going to use every trick in the book, and we know he's got many of them uh, to use. But Phelpsy is flying at the moment. He sets the fastest lap of the race last time around, a 53-2. So Ruben Phelps has got some great pace in this car right now. Just set the fastest lap of the race, and that could be crucial. The other thing to watch out here too, Carl, is that we've got Hennett, Daniel Hedershaw, uh, if we're driving from Natari in, in the Teams Championship in the Weekend Warriors. JCW is a, a, a Natari driver, but he's not in the team this year in, in the Warriors. So we w But we do see him in the Teams Championship uh, uh, with the, the Ans Car Cup. So we will see those two work, work close together. Uh, Matty Ray's back there. Uh, trying to get past those two Natari cars. And we've got Jamie Nankervis uh, in the Black Arrows car in the seven. You've got to say the race winner will come from one of these seven cars up here. And, uh, wow, just keep an eye back as well. Joy Shorts is flying at the moment. He is trying his best to catch up to the rest of this pack. He's just slipped it past Jamie Nankervis. And uh, I think he's running on pure rage, Red Bull and adrenaline right now to keep that car moving as fast as it can. Remember, he's on older tyres too, so he's really used them as all. Oh, Daniel Hedershide takes a huge smack to the wall through turn two. And that is going to make that car not drive in a straight line, I'm sure. That thing was a hefty, hefty whack. Coming through turn three, though, Ruben Phelps gets a little bit sideways. The back of the car steps out a little bit. This has given Dyson the opportunity to get close. Ryan Jones, he's really, really pushing to get himself up there. Not quite making it there at the moment, though. I think that little bit of a moment for Daniel Hedershaw just threw Ryan Jones off a little bit and caught him out. As he comes through turn one again. This is where Ruby Felt is able to make up some pace, make up some speed. Uh, but it's uh, it's fascinating. We've got two and a half laps remaining here at Pocono for the Outlaw Images 400. One little mistake here could be the difference between winning and losing. As Daniel Hedershaw had still got some pace in that car after taking such a huge whack to the wall as he's trying to get down the inside of Ryan Jones. They are really fighting hard at the moment for every inch of racetrack. With two laps remaining, it's getting close to the end here. And, uh, well, they are absolutely going for it up the front. It's got to say it's between Dyson and Phelps at the moment for the lead of this race. Dyson collects the wall, just gives it a nibble. That's going to cost him so much. He took some momentum down the straight here towards turn two. Uh, so that's going to cost him a little bit of speed. That could be what Ryan Jones needed to close that gap up and make his way up into P2. Unfortunately, yeah, it looks like uh, Dyson's been able to keep the momentum in that car. Just lost a little bit because he's uh, been able to just drive away again from Jones. But what wouldn't be helping Jones is uh, Hedershide uh, right on the back there uh, trying, to, trying to take that third spot. A little bit of a bump there uh, to let Jones know, hey, I'm here, I'm still coming for you. He's going to try and drive around the outside. That's very game. And yeah, as you can see, that getting up there and that loose stuff, he's just had to back off. That gives Jones the fight, the, the run you know, on the final lap. Had a shot. He's got a great drive here, Carl. Is he going to get take third place from nowhere to, to th a podium? He's really trying hard. The white flag is out. We are a few metres to the end of the race. Dyson gets a big snap going over the tunnel. This could be what Ruben Phelps needed to see in his mirrors. Just one last corner to go for the 06 SRM machine, the mobile brake mechanical SRM team, to get across the line. Dyson is going to be trying to use that draft to sign, fly his way past. Ruben Phelps pulls down to make sure Dyson does not get the opportunity and takes victory here tonight for the Outlaw Images 400. Ruben Phelps. Well, on paper, it looks like he started first, he finished first, and he got the fastest lap. It looks like it was an easy night, but it was anything far that. Ruben Phelps takes victory. Andrew Dyson comes home in second, with Daniel Hedescheid in third, Ryan Jones in fourth, Joshua Carroll in fifth, 
Ra Manny Ray in sixth, Jamie Nakerv seventh, Jerry Schultz in eighth, ninth place for Christopher Tomlin, and Adam Ariel will round out our top ten. And I'm sure Adam Ariel will be pretty chuffed with a top ten finish here tonight. Yeah, definitely. And look, uh, hard luck for uh, Joy. He, he, I, I would have to put him a, a, as the driver of the night. Um, I'm not sure how many laps he led, but um, it was some great racing there from the word get-go um, all the way through to, to lap 160. Yeah, it was some fantastic driving tonight from everybody. Um, but as I said, this man Ruben Phelps, he is going to be stoked with that victory. It was a hard-fought win for the Flying Kiwi tonight. And uh, well, we're going to see some well-deserved victory burnouts here. A few donuts for Ruben Phelps. Getting ready to drop the clutch and around she goes. So while Ruben's doing his burnouts, we'll bring up the results. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so let's run through the finishing order once more. It was Ruben Phelps taking victory fastest lap and pole position tonight. On paper, it looks like an easy night, but it was anything but. Andrew Dyson comes home in second, up 16 positions, biggest gainer of the race. Daniel Hedescheid comes home third uh, with Ryan Jones in fourth and Joshua Carroll Walden in fifth. It's Manny Ray who comes home for sixth. Good night for the Mobile Breaker Mechanical SRM team tonight with Jamie Curvis in seventh. Joy Schultz, a uh, bit of a hard luck story for him, but a fantastic race for him and the team in eighth with his teammate Christopher Tomlin right behind him. Another driver that absolutely put a top-notch performance in tonight. A well-deserved top 10 finish. And Adam Ariel rounding out our top 10 here tonight. It's Brenton Henderson who will bring it home in 11th after a very hard night's work behind that wheel. Maxi Marshall in 12th position with Norman Clark 13th, 14th Tristan Cox, Stevie Dub in 15th, Brad Fenley 16th, Kai Turner 17th, Mark Smith 18th, 19th Derek Jacobs, Gary Wellman in 20th and Brett Campbell in 21st. All the cars making it to half race distance. Um, Mark, I might leave interviews up to you tonight if that's okay. Yeah, well, while we're waiting for those guys to come up, uh, we've got our third place and second place together there. So we will bring up uh, Mr. Hedescheid, in who won, ended up running third tonight. Uh, welcome to the booth, mate, and congratulations on uh, third place tonight. Yeah, um, probably half an hour ago. I wasn't really expecting that. Just trying to hang on to the car on the lead lap with a lot of damage, but <laughs> somehow managed to come through at the end there and get a P3. Yeah, well, we've seen you mixed up in a, a few little incidents early in the race, and we kind of sort of uh, rode you off and uh, thought, oh, well, he's out, outside the top 10. Uh, he's not going to get back, and uh, drove yourself back into contention. And, uh, and and come home and finish third. Yeah, I was sort of just chilling at the start, trying to save gas and tyres, and then I went to go, stayed wide to let uh, Mark Smith, I think it was, pass, and yeah, decided to run me hard into the wall, and yeah, we made contact, and that wrecked my car big time, so I just sort of played the long game, come in for optionals, get it fixed, I think I had about five minutes of repairs at the start, stayed on the same set of tyres for over 100 laps, and so it gave me that last set where I guess everyone didn't. My car was still slow as shit, but I had the tyres there that I had a bit more pace on everyone in the corners to pull it back in third. Yeah. Mate, I did some laps around here this afternoon, and I found the right rear was the, the tyre that really wore. What what did you find tonight? Um, I was more probably looking at the front right. Like, the right rear was wearing a bit, but... Especially, like, I didn't get a long run with a good car. As soon as my car was damaged, it was killing the front right, because I don't don't think it was fast enough to light the rears up, so that's probably the difference. Yeah, fair enough. Well, mate, uh, closing in on, on your teammate, uh, Toby Stent, uh, there's some good points for the for this championship. Um, next week, we're off to New Hampshire. A uh, uh, nice little flat track there. Yeah, I quite like the short track, so we'll, we'll see how we go. 
I'm pretty sure I'll be showing up, hopefully. I don't <laughs> think I've got anything on next weekend. So we'll see how we go. Well, mate, great to see you back up here in the uh, the booth and on the podium. Uh, before we let you go, the usual shout-out to uh, sponsors and supporters. Yeah, just a shout-out to the Natari boys, Fully Floored, AJD Services, and Turbo Alpha Japan. All right, mate. Well, again, congratulations, and uh, well done on the third place tonight, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, cheers, mate. All right, so that was our... Daniel Hedderscheid will bring up our second place man, uh, Mr. Andrew Dyson. Uh, Andrew, congratulations on second place tonight, mate. Uh, some uh, some hard and some great and hard racing there right throughout that 160 lap race. Yeah, absolutely, man. It was good. There was a lot of good racing um, from throughout. A lot of a lot of sort of just you know biding time as well. It's such a long race, but. You know, once we got down to the end of the race there, everyone was racing. A few others thrown in to the mix as well. So that was good. Yeah. Nah, mate, uh, uh, you were very lucky in some spots there where you, you were able to miss a, a few of the uh, the cautions. Uh, uh, tire wear tonight, did you have another set of tyres up your sleeve or did you use your four of them tonight? Uh, yeah, all four sets. Yeah, used all four sets. So I, I took on my pretty much on my last pit stop, I decided I was going to take them early. Because I thought that um, it probably wouldn't have made that much of a difference with um, the tyre wear, which because it was looking like the tyres were pretty good. So once everyone kind of had a little bit of wear on them, it was kind of the same for everybody, which it, it turns out it was. So, um, but yeah, with the wrecks, I just um, yeah, I was kind of right there when, when they were happening, like directly in front of me. So I was able to read it, get a read on what was happening, and then just kind of drive around them. So it was worked out pretty good for me. Um, not ideal for everybody else. You don't ever want to see the wrecks either, but. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't get involved, so it was good. Yeah, uh, well, mate, uh, we haven't seen you at every round, but uh, with with second place tonight, uh, this should bruise you up into uh, into the top ten in the championship. Uh, so having a, a a good run when you do get to to run with us and uh, uh, looking pretty reasonable for for uh, a top ten in the championship for the for the year. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. Yeah, that's good. I mean, obviously, you know, it's such a uh, you know, like a long season and there's a lot of races and um obviously on weekends too so availability for everybody's a little bit different so i think at the end of the year when it all evens out and everyone kind of makes as many races as you can you can kind of get an idea of you know where you would have shook out or how you how you're going to shake out so but um yeah happy to be up there still that's that's good yeah we're off to new hampshire next week mate we're going to see you uh uh there at new hampshire yeah if i'm not busy i'll uh, roll in if i can that's for sure yeah, definitely. Well, mate, it's, it's uh, great to see you back up on the podium. Uh, I think uh, uh, most nights you, you, you're thereabouts when you do turn out and have, can have a run with us. Um, but, uh, again, a great finish for your second place. Uh, and before we let you go, shout out to your sponsors and supporters, mate. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I can't, um, just none of this happens without you guys putting this on. Obviously, the, the league and the broadcast itself, so thanks to you guys for that. Uh, thanks for all the drivers coming out, out and um, having a race, such a long one. So good to see everyone jump in and stick it out. And um, yeah, quick one to simrings.com and South Wales, Ben Max, all those dudes that get behind us. And everyone that gets behind the league as well. I know there's plenty of sponsors for the league. I can't remember them all, but they're all there and they're helping helping us uh, or helping helping you guys get it together so we can go racing and, and um, have a good time. So yeah, cheers for that. And um, congrats to everyone. Congrats to Ruben tonight um, for a good race. Yeah, no worries, mate. Well, hopefully we'll see you at uh, New Hampshire next week. Cheers, guys. See ya. Thanks. And we will bring up our race winner, the Flying Kiwi, uh, Mr. Ruben Phelps. Uh, congratulations, mate. A great race win there uh, to uh, at the end of uh, 160 laps. Oh, yeah, the bloody bugger. It was very <laughs> a very long race especially when probably from a lap literally 60 you needed to go you know <laughs> i think you can imagine what i needed to do so i was holding it in yeah some great tassels there between you and and joy and then you and and daiso um you really never got a chance to have a breakthrough this race except for one of the cautions uh some great long stint green flag stints um how did you find your tire wear uh, through the night um, actually, to be fair, I actually felt really comfortable, like, um, the front end was gripping nicely throughout the race, but 
for whatever reason, like my rear tyres wasn't quite um, getting the grip I would have preferred. That's hence the reason why every time I sort of, um, you know, every time I sort of got behind some people or sort of made a move, the car would just step out a lot, especially when I was in that front battle in the middle of the race. But I think as soon as I got that clean air on the nose, it sort of... Um, it sort of came right after that so clean air and all that on the front always makes a big difference with um, how the car rotates and all that sort of stuff other but you know of course the draft you know that's a big thing and if you don't have that it's sort of you know they're going to sort of have a run on you at the turn one especially so but no it was it was quite fun it was a good race it was keeping up with the pack which is always the main thing yeah definitely we, we've seen really right throughout uh the, the, the Pocono race um, we've seen the guys with the rear ends. Um, it, it seemed like a lot of guys were losing that rear end um, about 20 laps into their stint. Um, and, and and that was the major problem tonight. Yeah, that's exactly right. It was about lap 20 or, you know, in that region where the top rear tyres, whatever, you know, they'll start get a bit of heat to them and just coming off like two or, no, not two, um, you know, off the turn one and two and turn three especially um just the you would have that massive slide but there is a way to sort of fix that and a lot of it's down to what gear you're in because um especially in the tunnel turn where i found that because i did go into fifth a few times especially when i was leading near the end there when i was um i think it was like 30 laps to go where i was trying to try to save some gas but if you really want those rear tires to sort of keep temperature just um keep into fourth gear all the way down that you know the second straight there and then they will um keep the car underneath you a little bit better but um i suppose that's just tips and things so if anybody wants to listen to that and think that's going to make a difference then uh, well i've given them the tip now <laughs> yeah definitely well mate congratulations uh you've closed some uh closed in on some points on the uh championship leader toby stent um so uh, it's uh, starting to look good for your championship this year yeah like Obviously, with Toby not being around um, for the last couple of races, and you know, of course, everybody catches right back up. But not saying that he will return now, trying to defend it again. So I expect that. But to be fair, tonight was a bit more of a, um, you know, a bit more of a resurgence. I've had a pretty tough week racing-wise, and none of it's been exactly all my doing. It's just things have happened, and the cars has not been working, and. To be, fun, to be fair, on Thursday I had a bit of a rough one. I wasn't feeling happy about myself, so it's good to re-come back. Maybe I need to have these moments where I have a dismal and come back stronger next time around and have a couple of days to think about stuff. But um, also I wanted to gain a bit of respect because the last few races things have happened where, you know, whatever, where people haven't really been <laughs> too kind. But anyway, enough is enough. I, I got pole and... Not sure what the far, last, fast lap, no incidents, got the win, so top points tonight. Yep, definitely, mate. Uh, well, congratulations, and before we let you go, we'll uh, let you do a shout-out to your sponsors and supporters. I've got to, um, you know, support to SRM Australia, of course, Matty Ray and Brenton Hedison, who are raced tonight. Of course, Lockie and um, Lockie would be there too, but um, he's not wasn't there tonight. Of course, Jake as well. Um, of course, mobile brake and mechanical repairs, uh, Murphy's Mitre 10, Moondog, and um, our two uh, um, charities of uh, Australia Out of Pisha, and um, of course, uh, TS Tourette's Australia. All right, mate. Well, we'll see you next week at, at New Hampshire, and uh, congratulations again tonight on a great race win. Yeah, thank you. Well, there you have it, uh, Mr. Ruben Phelps, uh, uh, with a, another great race win. Um, Carl, we've still got some great race action coming up uh, this week. We have indeed. Tomorrow night, of course, it's going to be, uh, well, everything's bigger in Texas, and uh, usually the Australasian Supercar E-Series proves that fact. We're looking for a big race tomorrow night there at the legacy track so a very interesting one to run at as well so we hope we can see some of you there for that and then uh well uh, next week of course you said mark new hampshire for the warriors so plenty of action to come but for tonight we'll uh guess we'll wish everybody a good night and uh 
and uh, head off and get some relaxing done. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks for everyone for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, well, uh, another great night, sort of, uh, right, night uh, full of action and racing. <laughs>